greetings in the bonds of peace. And welcome to the vision I need to share. My name is Dr. Sean Lyons. I'm a forever student of the divine vision and revelation given to the founder of the Institute of Divine Life Physical Research, Dr. Henry Clifford Kennedy, who had his vision and revelation in the year of 1931 in the state of Ohio at 9 a.m. June 6th, first watch and third hour and day of Pentecost, according to Yahweh's prophetic timetable given to the Hebrew nation. Dr. Henry Clifford Kenley proved these facts on three ecclesiastical peace missions around the world to every religious organization and school of the highest learning from 1958 to 1976. As a result of his divine vision and revelation, he transcribed God, the archetype, original pattern of the universe. This publication was given to every queen and king of the earth and their progenies, including all presidents elect until 1980, along with a holy name version Bible revised by A. B. Trainer, an Italian Hebrew. The holy name Bible reveals the true and correct name and title of the heavenly father and his son. The name of the heavenly father is Yahweh. His divine title, is Elon. The name of the son is Yahshua, the Messiah, who the whole world erroneously calls Jesus Christ. Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley revealed to the world on his peace mission and within his publication, the threefold tabernacle pattern that Yahweh Elohim had given to Moses upon Mount Sinai in the year of 1490 BBY. and instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai, which was the establishment of the Mosaic law and cardinal ordinances. Yahweh Elohim had led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt instituting the Passover. After 40 years, Yahweh Elohim had commissioned Moses in the audience of the children of Israel to place his hand upon Yahshua, the son of Nun to give him charge to lead the children of Israel into the promised land before Moses had entered into Mount Nebo. 33 days later, Eleazar and the sons of Aaron, bearing the Ark of the Covenant, placed the soles of their feet upon the river Jordan, and it opened up like an unto the Red Sea. Joshua, therefore, had commissioned 12 men of valor to retrieve 12 stones from the midst of the river as a witness unto Israel, that Yahweh Elohim had opened up the Red Sea and the River Jordan for 130 years before the law to fulfill his promise to Father Abraham. Joshua, son of Nun, therefore, had numbered the children of Israel, confirming the, the covenant of circumcision to the cherub of Michael, captain of the host of Yahweh. to remove the reproach of Egypt from the children of Israel once they had entered into Canaan's land. 480 years after the children of Israel departed out of the land of Egypt, the foundation of this temple was laid. Seven years to the completion of this temple in correlation to the seven days of creation in like manner, born according to the three phenomenal days, a day for a year, it took three days to defer, so that all the instruments within the tabernacle of Moses will be placed within King Solomon's temple here upon Mount Moriah. This is a total of a 490 year cycle. The same divine service that was carried out for 40 years pertaining to the law of Moses was carried out for 33 years here within the temple of King Solomon. Before the invasion and destruction of Jerusalem and this temple by the king of Egypt, King Shishan. John, therefore, on the Israel of Patmos, had bear witness that Joshua was the true Messiah and the Lamb of Yahweh. John bared record that 
Joshua had told the Pharisees and scribes of his day to destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it again. But he spoke of the temple of his body. In like manner, John had read record that when the centurion guard had pierced Joshua within his side, that forthwith came blood and water. Joshua, therefore, had offered himself through his eternal spirit one time unto the Father. By the operation of his death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and outpouring of his Holy Spirit. To remove sin in the flesh. On June 6, 33 AD, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the 120 in the upper room was persecuted for seven years for preaching that Yahshua was the Messiah and the fulfillment of the law of Moses. In correlation to the 70 years of servitude and the disbursement of Israel amongst the nations that within the process of time in AD 40, the Gentile nation would be wrapped into the body of the Messiah as one new man. By the preaching and believing, in the salvation which was once delivered unto the children or sons of Elohim, fulfilling his promise to Father Abraham that all families of the earth will be blessed to thy seed, singular, which is Yahshua the Messiah. These illustrations can be found on page 42 in the 1961 edition and page 69 in the 12th edition. The guide the archive, original pattern of the universe called the comparative analyst or apocalyptic confirmation of the creation of Moses and John. Dr. Henry Clifford Kelly had given us rules of engagement pertaining to his vision that the manifestation will change, but the principle will remain the same. That being said, study to show thyself a cool, a workman who needs not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. And may the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, teach you all things. My aims and objective of these classes is to help you find Yahshua the Messiah in your heart and in your mind. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 5. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 17 through 20. 2 Corinthians 3, verses 1 through 6. My second aim and objective is to show you how Yahweh wrote his laws in your inner parts. Jeremiah 31, 31, Hebrews 8, 10 through 13. My third aim and objective is to help you discern the sons of Elohim and the sons of the devil. 1 John 3rd chapter, 1 John 4th chapter, verses 1 through 10. My fourth aim and objective is to show and prove that Yahshua is the true Eloah, whom Yahweh has sent. 1 John 5 and 20, John 17. My fifth aim and objective is to reveal that the children of faith in Yahshua the Messiah are the true seed of Abraham. Galatians 3 and 26 through verse 29. My sixth aim and objective is to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the age has been hid in Yahweh, who created all things by Yahshua the Messiah. Ephesians 3 and 9. My seventh aim and objective is to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bonds of peace. Ephesians 4 and 3. My eighth aim and objective is to press toward the mark for the prize of high calling in Yahweh, in Yahshua the Messiah. Philippians 3 and 14. My ninth aim and objective is to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery and of the nation, which is the Messiah in you, the whole of God. Colossians 1 and 27. My tenth aim and objective is proving the existence and destruction of Satan and his demons through the dispensation and ages. Romans 1 18 through verse 32 and Romans 2 verses 1 through 16. This particular time will be our prayer, our scripture reading, announcements, our script ascertainment, perception, and direction exam. We'll be choosing the speaker. We will be having our doxology, which is Ephesians. The third chapter, verses 20 through 21. At this particular time, I will be giving you prayer. 
Heavenly Father Yahweh, your servant comes before you again, thank you for the opportunity, Heavenly Father, to increase thy gospel and spirit ministry, Heavenly Father. I ask, Heavenly Father, that if you need to speak, Heavenly Father, I ask that you use my vessel, Heavenly Father, to preach thy gospel, Heavenly Father, and spirit ministry, and in righteousness. I ask, Heavenly Father, that you make my tabernacle perfect, Heavenly Father, for thy dwelling, Heavenly Father, and forgive thy servant for his shortcomings and his mishaps, Heavenly I apologize, Heavenly Father, for my weak moments, Heavenly Father. I apologize for my vulnerability and my weak points, Heavenly Father. And ask you, Heavenly Father, to strengthen me in those areas, Heavenly Father. I know as long as we are within these physical bodies, Heavenly Father, the adversity of the adversary, Heavenly Father, be upon us. I ask, Heavenly Father, that you deliver us, Heavenly Father. I ask you. For the power, the strength, Heavenly Father, and the justice, Heavenly Father, to manifest upon all those, Heavenly Father, that like to rise within the daytime, Heavenly Father. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for answering prayers, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing me to be patient, Heavenly Father, to deal or suffer the things that I have been suffering, Heavenly Father, pertaining to the principle. Just seem it as though you know a person is living in a hell, Heavenly Father. But to know that the only deliverance, Heavenly Father, comes from you, Heavenly Father. You are my peace, my joy. My love, my everything, Heavenly Father. I thank you for all the gifts that you give to me, Heavenly Father. Thank you for answering. Prayers, Heavenly Father. Thank you for taking away the things, Heavenly Father, that's unnecessary, Heavenly Father, that you don't allow an individual to live righteously, Heavenly Father, and purely, Heavenly Father, before you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for those that you have chosen, Heavenly Father, that's strong enough, Heavenly Father, to prevail and persevere <clears throat> through these evil times, Heavenly Father, and to make a declaration that which is right and holy before you, Heavenly Father, and separate yourself, Heavenly Father, from those who are weak and that wants to do the will of the adversary. I thank you for those people. I thank you for those angels, Heavenly Father. I thank you for the love and the support that comes from those individuals, Heavenly Father, and help them with things that they do and say, Heavenly Father, to make this a war, Heavenly Father, of lifting you, Heavenly Father. Because I know it's nothing. I'm grateful for these things in the name of your only begotten Son, Yahshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. Thank you. This particular time, we will be having our scripture lesson, which will be read out of the Holy Name Version Bible, which is critically compared to ancient authority derived from our various manuscripts. And derived by Yahshua Promotions. We'll be reading this evening's scripture. From the book of Numbers, and we'll be reading the 12th chapter. And it reads as follows And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Had Yahweh in me spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken? also by us, and Yahweh heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek of all men, which were upon the face of the earth. And Yahweh spake suddenly unto Moses, and unto Aaron, and unto Mary, come out, ye three, unto the meeting tent of the congregation. And they three came out. And Yahweh came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood at the door of the meeting tent and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, Yahweh, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, 
who is faithful in all my house. With him I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of Yahweh he beholds. Wherefore, then, were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of Yahweh was kindled against him, and he departed, and the cloud from off the meeting. And behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, I lost my sight, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead for whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb. And Moses cried unto Yahweh, saying, Heal her now, O Baal, I beseech thee. And Yahweh said unto Moses, If her father had put spit in her face, should not should she not be a shame seven days? Let her be shut out from the camp seven days. And after that, let her be received in again. And Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days, and the people journeyed not. Till Miriam was brought in again, and afterwards the people removed from Hezbollah and pitched in the wilderness of I read to you Numbers, the 12th chapter. At this particular time, we'll be having our announcements. Um, our announcements for this evening's class is um, Dr. Johnson will not be joining us this evening, neither will Elder Van Hook. I ask y'all we have him bless them in their endeavors. As well, um, I would like to thank all of our viewers uh, for viewing the site. Um, I see that um, we are growing. And that being said, I'll pray to be the Yahweh element. Uh, I would like to thank all of our viewers for their comments, the positive ones as well as the negative ones. I apologize for not being able to respond to the comments at this particular moment, but I would like to let you know that they are greatly appreciated. And I do acknowledge everything that has been said. So thank you very much. And may the peace and blessings of Yahweh, my Lord, be upon you in the name of his only begotten Son, the Pastor the Messiah. And I also recommend for all of those who are the new joiners um, to and the new people who have subscribed um, to our page, um, I humbly ask you that if you are a member of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research to go back and to look upon our first 42 lectures, um, whereby we have went through the whole entire purpose of the Yahweh Elohim from beginning to end using all of the materials that we have within our school system, using all the charts, the books, uh, things of that particular nature, as well as the 40 plate chart um, to authenticate the divine vision and revelation of our founder, Dr. Henry Booker Kelly. So um, if you haven't done so, um, I do recommend please go back and you know, um, leapfrog and jump, you know, go back, um, see what was said then, and then come up to the present and see what's being said now. So that you can see if you know it's a perpetuation from everything that we have shared with you in our previous lectures, just based upon where we are in time and where we are in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, to see if the principles are still uh, valid and perpetual. That being said, um, that will pretty much conclude um, our announcements. So, what we'll be doing at this particular point, we'll be getting into our perception and our direction exam. And along with that, we'll be getting into um, our first analogy for this class. Okay. So uh, for the most part, um, 
I shared with you uh, last night, um, which was uh, Monday night, um, how that we only got to two, we got to through two ecologies last night, and it took us pretty much almost practically three hours because there was a lot of principles for us to be able to uh, gather and to um, make ramifications on. And so I said that our third ecology that we had for um, yesterday evening's class that will be our first ecology for this evening's class. And so therefore, what happens is, is that tonight, um, based upon our ecologies, it takes us to Africa, okay, to the Middle East, and here it takes us to uh, Nigeria, okay? And here it says within this particular ecology that a Nigerian woman who life changed when she visited a leprous colony. In our series of letters from African writers, Nigerian novelist Adobe Tracia Nwebani writes about a woman who life changed after she got a skin ailment and later visited a leprous colony. Ivy, I cope to them, was used to being the life of the party. She loved fashion and jewelry, had a multitude of friends and a full social calendar often organizing events in the U.S. state of New Jersey, where she had lived with her husband and two children for the past 28 years. I was a showstopper, she said, but all that was brought to an end shortly after the first patch of dry skin appeared on her knee about 12 years ago, around the time her real estate business folded. She thought little of it rapidly spreading all over her body, except her face, following a series of medical tests. She was diagnosed with acute paralysis and a autoimmune disease that causes skin cells to build up and form scales and itchy dry patches. Even when she wore long sleeve blouses and maxi skirts to cover up the site and stop people from staring. Her condition still drew attention. Everywhere she went, she sometimes, when she got up from a chair, people exclaimed in shock, wondering where the dust of the floor had suddenly appeared from. I hated looking at myself in the mirror. It was my enemy, she said. Soon the stigmatization began. Miss I quote to them recalls a particular painful incident when she was among the weekend guests at a party in her friend's house. She was given a mattress on the floor in the basement while everyone else retired to guest room bedrooms upstairs. I sat on the floor crying, she said. Mrs. I called them. Soon became a recluse. Shaved her hair and was on a downward spiral until her 12 year old daughter told her, Mommy, you are my hero. Please don't allow the sickness to take you down. Mrs. Icodum said that dissolved every thought of suicide I had. The year after her diagnosis, her children were invited to join a group of young people in the US from her state of Ekawa, Iowa, who would volunteer for charity work there. Her son, Anthony, then about 15 years old, insisted that his mother accompany him. Reluctantly, she agreed. 
they visit a number of orphanages, trips which were covered on local television. While having breakfast in the hotel one morning, Miss I called to them, was approached by an old schoolmate who praised her and the youths for their work and suggested that they extend their charity to leprosy. In the world, despite its elimination as a global health concern, lepre leprosy still excuse me, prevalent in Nigeria with more than 3,500 cases diagnosed each year. According to the country's Center for Disease Control, the bacterial disease can be cured if diagnosed and treated early, but if left untreated, it can cause severe damage to hands and feet and even paralysis and blindness. Some parents were initially hesitant when Mrs. I called to them, mentioned going to the Elkane Obam Leprosy Hospital, but they eventually all accompanied her, a visit that changed her life. Like many leprosy hospitals around Nigeria, Ikikpini Obom also provides accommodation for patients who can no longer who can no longer for patients who can longer return to their who can no longer return to their original country on going to stig stigmatiz stigmatization even after they are cured from the disease that is treatable within six to 12 months of a course of antibiotics. They remain there with their family. Their children attend school also within the premises. Ms. Icozen told the residents and patients that she understood their plight. I knew what it was to be abandoned and to be stared at. Now here within this particular ecology, based upon the things that were said, and here how it said that it was a woman from Nigeria and said that when she had visited a leprosy colony, how it had changed her life. We have read for you within our scripture lesson um, for today's class, how that we went and found pertaining to how Moses' sister Miriam, based upon them having a complaint against Moses and Yah Yahweh Elohim heard it because Moses was uh, a prophet of Yahweh. How did Yahweh Elohim had punished Moses' sister? Okay. And so, therefore, when we do our perception and our direction exam, when we come here to the divine vision and revelation of our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kelly, and when we come here to authenticate his divine vision and revelation, and we come here, and based upon the uh, scripture lesson that we read, and we understand how Yahweh Elohim, after he had heard, what uh, Marion and Aaron said um, about Moses, because Moses had married um, Ruel's uh, daughter, okay, which was an Ethiopian woman, okay, uh, from the land of Midian, and they had a problem with that, and we understand that it really was the problem of the Ethiopian woman who Moses had married. It was just a simple fact, based upon when they said, "Has the elephant only spoken by you?" Okay, for the simple fact that we understand. That as a whole nation, that here when Yahweh Elohim called the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, that all of the twelve tribes of children of Israel stood here, and Yahweh Elohim spoke down to all of them from the cloud. Okay, so this is the reason why he says that Yahweh Elohim only spoken by you, Moses, because all of us heard Yahweh Elohim speak to us once we got here to uh, plateau of this particular mountain. Okay, but at the same time, everyone knew that Moses was the only one who Yahweh Elohim called up into the cloud to come to the top water plateau of this particular mountain. This minister, Yahshua, the son of Nun, he transfigured before him, okay? And then we understand pertaining to Aaron, Adab, and Abide, and the 70 elders of Israel had seen the Elohim of Israel, okay? Transfigured um, right before them all, okay, up here at the top of this particular mountain, all right? 
So therefore, we understand how 73 individuals or 74 individuals seeing the Elohim are the God of Israel at this particular time. So now when we get back down here and we understand based upon when it came here to this particular meeting, that after Yahweh Elohim ascended from the meeting tent right back up, okay, into the heavens, that Yahweh Elohim had plagued Miriam and allowed her skin to be leprosy, okay? And she had to be outside of the camp for seven days before the children of Israel could uh, pick up their camp, okay, and then go into the, um, go into the wilderness of Quran, all right? So based upon this particular um, ecology, and here we see how that this particular Nigerian woman says that she went to a, a leprosy camp, okay? Now here we understand pertaining to the scriptures how Yahweh Elohim taking her up out of the camp because it's the camp of Yahweh Elohim, all right? We got the 12 tribes of the children of Israel uh, surrounded by this threefold and kind of a tabernacle pattern, okay? And so therefore we have three tribes on this side, three tribes here, three tribes on this side, and three tribes here, okay? With the banners of Elohim all the way around, okay? Because we understand that we have um, the uh, the eagle, the lion, the oxen, and the man, okay? And so therefore, based upon those acronyms, you understand what I'm saying, which are the beginning letters of each one of these particular um, um, banners that were all around this particular uh, um, tabernacle pattern, that it had represented the name Bellum, okay? So therefore, we understand that she had to be outside of the camp for seven days until the leprosy had went away before she could return and then all of Israel departed. So now what happens is, is that here, that we understand based upon the rules and regulations of what our founder had told us to understand the principles pertaining to the divine vision of revelation that was given to him. And for us to be able to understand the prophecy of Yahweh Elohim, he shared with us based upon what we shared with you in the opening statements of our, uh, of our moderation of how the founder said that the manifestation would change, but the principle will remain the same. So here what happens is that when we come to this particular um, ecology, and it says that a woman's life was changed, okay, when she visited a leprosy camp or a leprosy colony in um, our series of letters from African writers, it says that Nigerian novelist Adobe Tracia Mwabani writes about a woman whose life changed after she got a skin element and later visited a lepr leprosy colony, okay? So now, based upon, we see how Miriam was within the camp of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, okay? So she was within the camp, okay? And she was safe, all right? And so therefore, she was within this particular camp. And so therefore, based upon her catching leprosy, she had to leave her particular comfort zone, you understand what I'm saying, and stay outside of the camp seven days because she was impure. So therefore, here we have a woman, you understand what I'm saying, that's going, okay, to a whole camp, you understand what I'm saying, or a whole colony to where nothing but individuals who have leprosy live, okay, which have been separated from their countries and where they stay at, you understand what I'm saying, once they have uh, contracted this particular disease, and then they send them over here to Nigeria, because this is where <coughs> you have a hospital over here, okay? You have several hospitals over here in um, Africa where they treat this particular um, disease. It says over here that when it was talking about her, it says how that um, um, Mrs. I Ivy, um, I quote to them, said that she was used to be in the life of the party. She loved fashion and drew, okay? And so therefore, when we look at the principles of how she says that she loves fashion and jewelry, and we understand the principles of jewelry, that here, that when we're talking about this particular principle of how Miriam had to stay, or she had got kicked up out of the camp, that we're talking about Jews, okay? So therefore, when we look at the principles of jewelry, okay? And she loved fashion and jewelry, and this is talking about the Jews, 
that we understand the intertwining relationship based upon jewelry and Jews, you understand? And so therefore, this is just showing you and taking you back how this is taking us to the Jewish nation, you understand what I'm saying, based upon this particular ecology, which we are extracting principles um, of, out of the uh, scriptures and the divine vision of revelation of our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Killing, not only to authenticate this divine vision along with the scriptures, but as well as being able to go within this particular ecology to extract um, principles of our perception and our direction exam. Now we share with you every class that our perception and our direction, that number one is our perception is to show you principles and manifestations here upon this vision using principles of blood, water, and spirit, and change, which is a number 4, 40, or 400, as well as principles of death, burial, resurrection, okay, and ascension, resurrection, ascension, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, all right? So therefore, based upon when we look at the, these partic particular principles, when we are looking at it, which is our perception, these are the things that have given us a direction to lead us into the Messiah, because the law and the prophets is a schoolmaster to lead us into the Messiah. This is the reason why when Yahshua had rose from the dead, fulfilling the laws of Moses and everything pertaining to the scripture, that he had the keys of life, okay, which is the testimony pertaining to the principles of the law and the prophets, all right? So this is the reason why that we come here, we extract these particular principles, and what we do is allow us to be able to go throughout the whole entire prophecy, okay, based upon the things that were written within the scriptures, and for us to be able to see things that are manifesting now today, and to be able to correlate or run ramifications based upon the things that are happening within the news, based upon the things that have already transpired within the scriptures, which was the news of Yahweh's Elohim unto the world that is placed within a book called the Bible. So here, when we further look, it says how that she had a multitude of friends and she had a full social calendar, okay? So therefore, when we're looking at this particular principle that we understand that Yahweh Elohim to give the children of Israel a calendar at this particular time and told the children of Israel that the month of Abib or the month of April shall be the first day of the month unto you. You understand what I'm saying? Going back to where, how we see how she had a full social calendar, all right? So therefore, Yahweh Elohim had given the children of Israel a calendar to go by based upon the things that they have went through since the time that Yahweh Elohim had taken them up out of the land of Egypt, okay? Like I said, and given the children of Israel their own calendar, which was a lunar calendar, okay? So therefore, we see all these particular principles that we are extracting from. It says that she had organized events within the U.S. in the state of New Jersey, where she had lived with her husband and her two children for the past 28 years, okay? So now when we come here and we look at these particular principles, all right, and it's talking about the principles of 28 years, we share with you pertaining to the principles of two, represents the principles of father and son, and pertaining to the number of eight, that we share with you that that's Elohim's number, all right? As well, okay, number eight means a new beginning because it's a double principle of four to where Joshua says that I am the door, okay? Which is the fourth principle pertaining to the steps within this particular tabernacle that have seven steps, three compartments, and nine furnishings. Now, when we take these particular principles, all right, and we look at the two and eight, that we add them together and it becomes the number of 10. Because we understand it pertaining to the number of 10, it's principled as the 10 commandment law that Moses had received or went up here to the top of Mount Sinai and received from Yahweh Elohim. Okay? So now, when we're looking at this particular principle, where it says how she was married um, uh, to her husband, she had two children, they were married for the past 28 years. Okay, and where she lived, she had a calendar. You understand that this is pertaining, picking up all the principles based upon how the children of Israel have, have received the calendar, came out here and received the Ten Commandment Law from Yahweh Elohim. All right, so therefore, based upon the things that we noted from this particular story here that we are extracting about the scriptures to, where we can see the ramifications, okay, here within this particular newspaper article. All right, so based upon the 28 years, you understand that that's correlated up to the law of Yahweh Elohim going according to the calendar where she said that she had a social calendar 
And so therefore, we're looking at the time frame. It says that she has um, two children, all right? We take the two based upon we're adding the two and eight together pertaining to the law. And then we're picking up the principles of her two children for one for the law, the second unto the testimony. Picking up the two because those are the two faithful witnesses. You understand what I'm saying? Pertaining to uh, the law which govern uh, the principles within the law of Moses, all right? And so when we come along and it says here, that it says that I was a showstopper. She said, but all of that was brought to an end shortly after the first patch of dry skin appeared on her knees about 12 years ago, okay? And so therefore, um, it says, and this was around the time that her real estate um, business had folded, okay? So now what we do is, is that she says that everything was brought to the end. She says, when the first patch of dry skin appeared on her knee about 12 years ago, all right? And so therefore, we have shared with you based upon the principles um, yesterday pertaining to uh, the principles of the knee, okay? Now, this is talking about her physical knee on her physical body where the dry patch had began, and therefore, it says that it was a dry uh, spot, you know, that had manifested there and had been there for about 12 years, all right? Now, when we look at these particular principles that we understand how that when we talk about uh, principles of the knee, this is talking about uh, physical principles here, okay? Uh, now, what we did um, last night was we came here and we extracted the principles of how the gentleman said that he bowed on his knees, he bowed his head down, his ears popped, and therefore uh, he said that debris had came through the door. We share with you that pertaining to the principles in the head cavity that we have a gland that's manifested right here called the pineal gland that governs the whole entire body like the Ten Commandment Law governed the children of Israel. And that's placed here within the three configuration part of the covenant within the most holy place and the pineal glands is manifested within the head cavity pertaining to the principles of the tabernacle of man. So when we look at these particular principles and we correlate them one of another, and we see how the Ten Commandment Law uh, governed the children of Israel, which was placed within the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant, and we come here and see the law in the mouth pertaining to the principles of the pineal glands and how the pineal glands had governed the whole entire body to where you can see how that's the principle of the law. This is the reason why we call this the pineal gland, or this is the knee that bows. You understand what I'm saying? And as well, that the pineal glands is sensitive unto light based upon the principles of when the high priest had to sprinkle blood. Uh, 21 times based upon the three trips that he took up here. In essence, that seven times per trip that he sprinkled blood here upon the mercy seat, okay, with a center of incense. And then after he'd done this three times, that there was a second eye, okay, meaning that it lit up. And so therefore our pineal glands is sensitive unto light to where it shows the reflection of that round thing that's within your eye, how it gets bigger and little and how it's sensitive to light is how it reacts the um, hormones or the uh, nerves uh, within that glands pertaining that's here within the head cavity of your pineal glands, okay? And so that's how this is related. Now here, when we come here and we're looking at how that it says that the bone structure of man represents the pillar boards and in the tabernacle, okay? And so therefore, when we look at these particular bone structures and, you know, we count how we got one, two, three, okay? And we come down here to the wrist and then we come here for the leg, we got, um, Three, we got four, so we got five, and then you come down here to the to the feet, picking up the phalanges here. That's six. We got seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's picking up the tabernacle pattern. We have one, two, three here, which one, two, three here, which is picking up these principles here, picking up the head cavity, the chest cavity, and the court round about. Okay, picking up these particular principles here. All right, and that's just picking up the head and the torso, and this is what we have here. So when we pick up the extremities pertaining to our arms and our legs and there being 12 limbs in all, that that is principle of how uh, the children of Israel were here within the wilderness of Sinai. Here is the, the structure of the torso and the 12 tribes being all the way around uh, this particular tabernacle is in principle of how we have 12 limbs, okay, around the... Uh, the principles of the head and the torso, which is a representation to the, of the tabernacle of man. 
So here we have the tabernacle uh, here with the 12 tribes based upon our extremities all the way around the tabernacle pattern, okay? So that's what we have here. So when we come here and it says that she had a patch pertaining to, uh, that broke out on her knees and it had uh, uh, manifested there for 12 years that that, that the um, dry patch of skin on her knees is picking up these extremities, okay? Which are the 12 tribes which is incorporated into the 12 tribes of the children of Israel that manifested right here. You understand what I'm saying? On her physical body. So this is how it is related unto the 12 tribes of the children of Israel and how we picked up the principle based upon when the woman, Miriam, had received um, leprosy from Yahweh Elohim on how she had to stay outside of the camp. So therefore, based upon the principles of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, her receiving leprosy on her knee and manifested there for 12 years, showing how that it took 12 years or more for her to be able to come into this particular leprosy colony, for her to go back in for the children of 12 tribes of the children of Israel to be able to move from where they were, which was Razar, Razar Rock, and to be able to move to the wilderness of Haran. And so therefore, based upon this particular dry patch on her knee and being there for 12 years allowed her to go into the uh, colony or into the camp of the lepers. You understand what I'm saying? So now we see how that the manifestation has changed, but the principle remains the same. How an individual has leprosy and how that they are going in and out of a colony or in and out of a camp. You understand what I'm saying? Now when Miriam had caught leprosy, and she had to stay without the camp for seven days. She was very embarrassed. You understand what I'm saying? And she came back in. And Yahweh Elohim had gave the example unto Moses that if her father had spit in her face, wouldn't she be embarrassed to stay outside of the camp for seven days? So this is the reason why she had to stay outside the camp for seven days. And so therefore, when we look at these particular principles, that this was a life-changing experience. You understand what I'm saying? This changed her. And it's changed Miriam's life forever because she had never went against the oracles of Yahweh Elohim again and never raised up against her brother, her little brother, Moses, ever again, ever since that this incident has happened. Nor did she ever go against her brother amongst all of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. You understand what I'm saying? Based upon all of the examples of Yahweh Elohim has showed all the people based upon those who established his golden calf, those who was on the other side of the line of Moses and how the ground opened up and swallowed them. And so all the based the diversity that had happened for all the people going against Moses, you understand what I'm saying that Miriam and Aaron have never went against their brother ever again after this particular incident. So therefore that had changed her life, you understand? So here within this particular ecology, how it was saying that this particular incident, her built going into a leprous colony had changed her whole entire life as well, okay? So now what happens is what we do, that when we come here to the divine vision and revelation that's being revealed, and we look at these particular principles based upon what's going on here within this particular ecology, how that it says, uh, that the lady had a patch of dry skin to manifest on her knees, all right? So what happens is that when we come to the divine vision being revealed, we share with you the principle, how this is the man Adam, okay, this is the woman Eve, okay, manifesting right here, all right? We share with you that this is her head cavity. We share with you on our uh, former um, ecology, how we picked up the principles of here is the knee. Uh, he says that he covered his head and his ear popped, okay, based upon when that tornado had came in, when we picked up the principle of how that the tornado uh, had manifested over there within the six states, within the center part of the uh, United States, okay, was one of the, which was one of the largest storms or uh, one of the largest tornadoes that, that, that was a historical a tornado that had hit the U.S., okay? It had to be documented because it was one of the um, fastest and biggest storms that have ever hit the United States, okay? That took the lives, I believe, of 64 individuals. So now when we come back here and we're showing you the principles here based upon how we got the woman and this is our man, all right? We share with you how here is the man's chest cavity here based upon the principles of South. is a representation to show you the same thing that's in the man, the same thing that's within the woman. We come down here and show you principles based upon how you got the fig leaves around the man's loins that you see the green right here. This is the principle of the um, fig leaves around her particular loins. Here as well, we're showing you principles that this is her stomach, okay, based upon the principles of how you got Cain and Abel uh, within her particular stomach at this particular time. She's also manifesting 
um, the principle of Rebecca with two nations within her womb, okay? So this is the woman, here's her stomach. You understand what I'm saying? Here's her garment to show you how the garment that's coming over her stomach is white. You understand what I'm saying? To show how she is a fair woman. So when we also come here and we look at the principles of, of of um, red, black, and green. You understand what I'm saying? That this is picking up a negative principle. So pertaining to the woman, that she can manifest principles of a righteous woman or a negative woman, but at the same time, whether she's manifesting a righteous woman or an unrighteous woman, that the principle of the woman that she is fair to look upon. Here, when we come down here and we look at the principle of the World Trade Center, that this is the manifestation of her legs. We share with you that this is the foundation that she's standing on because she is standing on a satanic foundation for the simple fact of what had happened within the beginning based upon her being deceived by Satan and she partaking of this malefic fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and of evil. And so therefore, she went from being um, holy and innocent, you understand what I'm saying, to the words of Satan. And so therefore, her foundation has become... Um, uh, um, wicked, okay, and so therefore, this is the reason why she is standing upon a satanic foundation. You understand? We're not saying that the woman is evil, she just transgressed. You understand what I mean? And so, therefore, going according to the scriptures, if you understand what it's saying, that Yahweh Elohim they call their name Adam. And so, therefore, when we look at the scriptures, how it says that this is the endemic transgression based upon how that the uh, man had partaken of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the creation came down. But when Yahweh Elohim had called their name Adam, that it was the feminine portion of the man Adam who was in the transgression because when we go over there to the scriptures over there within Timothy, I believe it's the first uh, chapter. I'm not sure if it's the first book of Timothy or the second book of Timothy, but how it states that the man Adam was not within the transgression, but the woman. So therefore, when we look at the principles based upon what Yahweh Elohim called the woman and the man, you understand what I'm saying that we can see how it was the endemic transgression, but it was the feminine portion of the man Adam who was in the transgression and not the physical man, though he partaken and allowed the whole entire creation to come down because he had to manifest the principle of the degenerator. So therefore, we understand that the man has to see and not the woman. But in like manner, when we come back here and we look at these particular principles, let me share with you the principles um, pertaining to 9-11. Here we share with you the principles when you're looking at the stomach that this is the principle of the top quarter of the nine. And you come down here and you can see how this is the nine. And with the two twin towers that this is manifesting the principle of nine. And here is 11. Okay. Here's the principle of nine. Coming right down here with the black part where you see the dove coming in here is manifesting this nine. And then with the two twin towers manifest the principle of nine. 11, which would come right here. Now, when you see in the explosion manifest right here, based upon her legs, that this is manifesting the principle of the uh, dry patch of skin that manifested upon her knee. Okay, so we wanted to come here and show you the explosion that is manifesting right here, okay, upon her her, her, her knees or her legs, okay, it's like an unto the patch of skin that was there for 12 years, you understand? Because this particular principle right here, when we're looking at the destruction of the two, um, um, to two towers of the World Trade Center, what we got written right here that this is the principle of the tables of stone that Moses had threw down when the children of Israel, you understand what I'm saying, had made uh, the golden calf, all right? So therefore, this is a representation of this, uh, the two tables of stone, uh, which had the laws of Yahweh Elohim upon that Moses had threw down. So this is the reason why we come here and see the principles of the tables of stone that's written right here on these particular tower, okay? I'll come in and just show you the principles because I like to prove all things instead of just saying it, you understand? We want to show you that it's there. Instead of giving you hypothetics, you understand what I'm saying, and not allowing you to be able to see these particular principles, okay? So here you come here and you see how it is written, all right? Pertaining to that particular principle. We got Moses here seeing the transformation of Elohim right here. We got him sitting on the second age because the second age is like an unto Moses. You can't see. Sorry. Let's come back a little bit here. We got Moses sitting on the second age here. All right. Because this principle as the second age, as the principle of the two tables of stone that he had to give up himself, you understand what I'm saying, and bring them down after he had broke these two tables of stone. So like I said, when we're looking at the explosion manifesting here pertaining to the principles of her knee, that this was a dry patch of skin, you understand what I mean? Based upon these are the 12, the two tables of stone that were given to the 12 tribes of the children of Israel was the reason why that this patch that had manifested on a dry patch of skin that had manifested on her knee had to manifest for 12 years, picking up those same particular principles. You 
You understand what I'm saying? As well as we understand that when we look at the fulfillment of this, that when we come and we look at the principles pertaining to when we come to the divine vision and revelation, okay, of our founder, that when we come here to the woman's clothed within the sun, okay, pertaining to how when Yahshua have filled it, that we understand that now the woman has 12 stars what upon her head and she stands upon the moon because that is the principle of how Yahshua the Messiah have fulfilled the principles of the law, okay? And now the woman is being clothed back within the sun you understand? And so therefore, we see how she has 12 stars upon her head, okay, pertaining to her crown, all right? And so now she's standing on the moon and she no longer is standing upon that satanic foundation. You understand what I'm saying? Now she is standing on the principles of the law, which is pertaining to the moon, all right? So she's standing on the law of Moses, all right? That Yahshua was fulfilled after he went through his death, burial, and resurrection. So we wanted to show you those particular principles as well, so you will be able to understand the things that we are talking about when we are running these particular ramifications, all right? Now, we have also ran other principles pertaining to uh, principles of how this can also manifest principles of um, the latest flower, okay, um, childbirth, and all as well as principles of um, this particular individual losing his state of consciousness and dying and being up under this delusion of eternal darkness uh, forever, okay? So these are the principles that this manifests here when we're looking at these things that are manifesting right here because we share with you many a times that this particular chart and this vision is multi-principle, okay? So we have to keep that in mind, all right? So now we come back here to the divine vision of Revelation. I'm a rock down. Here we come back to the um, ecology. And then it says that um, that after uh, her real estate business had folded, as she thought a little of it, she rapidly spread all over her body, except uh, her face following a series of medical tests, all right? So now, um, based upon, we go to the scriptures and it says that when Aaron had looked upon his sister Miriam, how that she looked as if a child had just come up out of the womb and her whole entire body was leprosy. She was leprosy. Here, it's saying within the scriptures that um, her whole entire body, you understand what I'm saying, was going through the paralysis and the changes of, of the disease taking on an effect within her body. So therefore, she says she had to cover herself up. Um, it says that... Um, and when she went to um, get medical tests, it says that she was diagnosed with an acute uh, um, paralysis of an autoimmune disease that causes skin cells to build up and form scales um, and itchy and dry patches, even when she wore long sleeves, blouses, and maxi skirts to cover up the sight of uh her dry skin that it says that people still stopped uh they still didn't stop people from staring at her and her condition it says she drew attention wherever she went it says sometimes she uh when she got up from a chair people uh um, exclaimed and was shocked wondering where the dust of the floor had suddenly appeared from she says i hated looking at myself in the mirror she said it was my enemy. She said that soon as the stigmatization had began, that Mrs. Um, Icodium um, recalls a particular painful uh, incident when she uh, went among guests at a party and her friends um, uh, in the house was given a mattress on a floor in the basement while everyone else retired in the guest room upstairs, okay? So now when we look at these particular principles and as well as it's talking about how that she was sent down to the basement, okay, on a mattress, all right? And then she said how the other guest was given guest rooms up here upstairs. Now, what happens is that when we come here and we look at principles pertaining to the basement, that we look at how the children of Israel were down here within the land of Egypt when they were in bondage, all right? So by her being in the basement, it's showing how that she is placed uh, from being here within the holy place where the party was. And now they said there was an overnight event. So therefore, they put her down here within the night pertaining to the principles of the death of Yahshua Messiah, as well as picking up the principles of Saturday, because 
because it was the weekend. You understand what I'm saying? So we come right down here to Friday and Saturday because she's staying here within this particular um, ecology, how this was a weekend event, how she's staying with friends and they put her down in the basement alone, okay, right here on the mattress. And then all the rest of the guests, you understand what I'm saying, based upon the event of the weekend. Now we're seeing how this particular lady, Mrs. Um, 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 Ivy, how she is manifesting principles of the Messiah because she's down here within the basement pertaining to principles like an unto death. You understand what I'm saying? She says she's down here crying while all the other guests, you understand what I'm saying, were in guest rooms up here, okay, upstairs. So when we come up here, when we come to and through the divided waters of the River Jordan, that we understand that the children of Israel, once they had crossed to and through the divided waters of the River Jordan, that they received their inheritance. You understand what I'm saying? So this is like an unto the guests being um, living up in guest quarters that were up, upstairs, you understand what I'm saying, pertaining to the children of Israel receiving the inheritance, you understand? And as well, we understand the principles of how that some of the children of Israel wanted to stay on this side of the River Jordan, you understand what I'm saying, and take um, uh, pieces of this particular land on the other side of the River Jordan as the inheritance, you understand? But Yahweh Elohim told them that if they wanted this land for the inheritance because they had much cattle, okay? We see Moses, how he, this is manifesting the principles of the land of Midian, uh, where Moses was when he had married the Ethiopian woman. And therefore that some of the children of Israel had found this land plentiful because they had sheep. It was green for their cattle to be able to graze and they had enough water based upon the principles of how the River Jordan had overflowed his banks. But Yahweh Elohim told them that they had to come over here and fight with their brethren, you understand what I'm saying, for 40 years before that, so that they can get their inheritance at the same time. You understand what I'm saying? They couldn't rest here and have their brethren go over here and fight. So Yahweh Elohim told them to cross over, fight with your brethren, and when your brethren get their inheritance, you shall go back over here across here and receive yours. But leave your children, you understand what I'm saying, and your cattle here, okay? And so therefore, this had allowed the children of Israel to be able to receive inheritance here. So we're showing you based upon principles of here as being the most holy place as those well within the upper room. Here is your intermediate pertaining to where they had the party. You understand what I'm saying? And then here's the basement pertaining to where they set her upon a mattress. You understand what I'm saying? Like an unto Yahshua being placed uh, within Joseph's new tomb. You understand what I'm saying? So therefore, we see how that she is fulfilling the principles of the Messiah and how that the next, after the weekend was over, she resurrected, but yet still she said she was crying because of how they treated her. When we look at these other principles based upon that, that we see how the Lady Mary Magdalene, when she came unto the sepulcher of Joshua the Messiah, early Monday morning. So therefore, this is picking up the principles after the weekend of how she is resurrecting from out of uh, the basement, okay, and she's coming upstairs like it's unto when we look at the principles of Mary Madeline coming unto the tomb of Joshua the Messiah early Monday morning or at the beginning of the week after the weekend, you understand? So therefore here, we come here to show you these particular principles here, okay? And I think that these things are very beautiful because it runs the ramifications just perfectly, okay? Just going according to the scripture. But we can see how everything is going along and going according to the, um, the uh, prophecy of Yahshua the Messiah, okay? So here's a woman coming up, all right, to the sepulcher to see Yahshua, okay, from the principles of um, them coming from the principles of the court around about where she was bound, you understand what I'm saying? Or where she stayed for the weekend, okay? On a mattress, okay, away from everyone else, all right? So we wanted to show you those particular principles there. So what we do is that we come back to the article, see what it's saying, for us to be able to um, follow the principles. And so it says here that, uh, And she sat on the floor crying. It says she had became a recluse and she shaved her hair and was on a downward spiral until her 12 year old daughter told her, mommy, you are my hero. Don't allow this sickness to take you down, okay? She says that dissolved every thought of suicide I had. The year after her, uh, diagnosis, her children were invited to join a group of young people in the U.S. from 
her home state of Aqua Ibom. Okay. Now, when we look at this right here, she says that her 12 year old daughter had told her mommy, you're all my hero, and please don't let the sickness take you down. Okay. Now, based upon these particular principles, when it's talking about her 12 year old daughter, okay, came to her and said, mommy, don't let um, that sickness take you down. Um, and we're seeing how, based upon the principles of, um, she said that she had shaved her head. You understand what I'm saying? Now, when I talk about that she came recluse and she shaved her head, I want you to come here and look on the chart. So we're here when we see how we got Yahshua here being baptized with John the Baptist, that Yahshua head is shaved. You understand what I'm saying? Because we understand that Yahshua shaved his head because he had took in his vows as a Nazarene. And so therefore he had to shave his head. And the vow was that after he shaves his particular head that everything that grows back because he's taken the vows of a Nazarene that he can't shave his head or shave his beard. So therefore he had to grow locks and he had to grow a long beard. But here, once he has started his ministry, it shows how he was recluse and had to shave his head. So here we have the principles manifesting right here, all right? Now, when we're looking at it, and it's manifesting down here within the principles of Egypt, that this is spiritual Egypt. You understand what I'm saying? And therefore, we understand it pertaining to the principles that when Yahshua had came down here with his uh, parents, um, Joseph and Mary, that he came down here. And when he was the age of 12 years old, that he came up out, out of the land of Egypt to fulfill the principles how out of Egypt I have called my son. And he was 12 years old to fulfill the principles of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. So now we have here on this particular ecology how her 12-year-old daughter is saying, Mommy, don't let this sickness get you down. Down, you understand what I'm saying, to bring her up out of her condemned state, which is like an unto this darkness are the principles of this black in Egypt. You understand what I'm saying? So therefore, it says, out of Egypt, I have called my son because her daughter was 12 years old. And says, mommy, don't let the sickness get you down. You understand what I'm saying? So therefore, it says that that year, you understand what I'm saying, to where we come right back here. We look at the principles pertaining to how it was a year for a day. You understand what I'm saying? The reason why the children of Israel had to manifest out here within the wilderness for 40 years. You understand what I'm saying? Because it's talking about the following year. All right. And we understand these particular principles because Moses has sent uh, 12 spies to go spy out the land. They came back with a false report. And based upon they were only supposed to be out here for 40 days, y'all return 40 days into 40 years. All right. So that will pick up those particular principles based upon her daughter being 12 and saying, Mom, Mommy, you are my hero, okay? Because we're looking at the principles of how Yahshua will fulfill those particular things, and he is our savior. And so therefore it says that, um, that it says that they were invited, okay, to be amongst a group of young people in the US, which was from their home state of Akua, all right? And we understand that after the children of Israel were out here for some odd 40 years, that the young men of valor was the ones who crossed to and through the divided waters of the river Jordan to obtain the inheritance that Yahweh Elohim had given unto the children of Israel because the men of war who believed and received an evil report all died off right here within the wilderness of Sinai, all right? So now we're seeing the transition from the death that happened right here based upon the principles of the men of war and how it says that she is with a group of young people pertaining to the principles of the young men of valor going to and through the divided waters fighting for the inheritance and receiving them. Now the only one who was amongst the uh, new people or the young men of valor was that came from the men of war or came up out of the land of Egypt was Caleb and Yahshua. Those were the only two, you understand what I'm saying? And Caleb was the one who came from here, from Egypt, manifest out here for 40 years and cross over to and through because he said that Caleb had another spirit. So Caleb was here with the young people. You understand what I'm saying? Like how it says that she was here and she was with a young crowd from her home state. You understand what I'm saying? Showing you those particular principles because we understand that Caleb was a Hebrew and the young individuals who were out here pertaining to the young men of valor who wasn't circumcised were young people and his people. You understand what I'm saying? And they were from uh, they were Israelites, just like how Caleb was. You understand? To show you those particular principles there. Then it says uh, how that um, that when they were with the young people, and she said that she done work with her son. Her son name was Anthony. He was about fifteen years old, and insisted that her mother accompany uh, him. Reluctantly, she agreed. Okay. 
Now, when we look at the principles based upon how her son, Anthony, is 15 years old, that is picking up the same principles of how that the Egyptian um, princess who bore Abraham's first son, Ishmael, uh, was around the same age when um, Abraham had told uh, the Egyptian woman that she had to leave from uh, Sarah and um, Ishmael because Yahweh El who says, don't be upset to send away the bond woman and her son away from your heir. You understand what I'm saying? So now we're looking at these particular principles here because now he's manifesting the principles of 15, which is an actuality, the number of man, but in actuality is picking up the principles of Ishmael of how he had to leave from his father Abraham and he's out there and he's saying, mom, come with me. So therefore we understand how the woman and her son had to leave from father Abraham and um, and from Isaac and Sarah, you understand what I'm saying, and manifest themselves right out here. So now we see this particular principle um, being fulfilled. And it says, as they visit a number of orphanages, okay, because now when Abraham had uh, removed um, Ishmael and uh, the bondwoman, that this is allowing Ishmael to become an orphan because his father had abandoned him. You understand what I'm saying? And the bond woman, okay? So now it's saying how they went and visited orphanages. You understand? And so therefore, uh, when the woman and the bond woman and her son was out there, that the angel had came and visited them. You understand what I'm saying? And asked her, why was she crying? You understand what I'm saying? So that also goes back and pick up the principle based upon when she was down here um, and she was crying down here within the basement, how everybody else was up here. Now we see the same principles that's being picked up based upon the bond woman and her child being moved away from the heir and, and Sarah, which was his wife and, and the promise seed. You understand what I'm saying? So now we're seeing all these things recapitulate over again based upon what we're reading here. And then it says as well as um, that after she had went uh, to the orphanage, she went to a number of orphanages. Says that she went on a trip and all of it was televised, okay? And it says that while she was having breakfast, it says that one of her old schoolmates um, approached her who praised her and her youth for the work and suggested that they should extend their love to leprosy in a world, okay, in the world, all right? So here how it is saying how that she received her praise and her children. You understand what I'm saying? based upon the things that she was sitting up doing. Now, we understand that there was another woman who received praise based upon the things that she did, and she was um, noted as a virtuous woman, and that's pertaining to the prophetess Ruth. You understand what I'm saying? And the children that she had bared, you understand? So therefore, we see how um, it says that um, an elder, you understand what I'm saying, had came unto her and told her that she should look um, toward leprosy, okay, that she should add have her charity work go towards, you know what I'm saying, those who had leprosy, all right? So therefore, um, it says that uh, in the world, it says despite its um, uh, elimination as a global health concern, okay? So now it's eliminated as a global health concern, okay? But yet back in the days of these particular uh, worlds, you understand what I'm saying? Because it says the first heaven and earth passed away and there was no more sea not even within the second heaven and earth, that this is a whole global event, that back in these particular days, you understand what I'm saying, that um, that leprosy was a, was a major concern, you understand what I'm saying, because it didn't have uh, the, the treatments that we have now to be able to take care of leprosy, all right? It says um, that it said that leprosy is still prevalent in Nigeria with more than 3,500 3, cases, okay? Now, when we look at this, all right, it's talking about the principle of 35. Now, it says that uh, this particular tabernacle pattern has three compartments, okay? That's picking up the principle of three, all right? Now, when we come to the principle of five, that's the principle of the holy place. And Yahshua said that when you see the isolation, desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, to stand within the holy place. The majority of the principles that we have been sharing with you coming here from the court run about the holy place to the most holy place that we have been here within the holy place based upon what it is talking about, all right? So when it's talking about how you have a case of 3,500 cases diagnosed of individuals of each year according to the country's um, Center for Disease Control. So within the country of Nigeria that every year you have at least 3,500 cases of people being diagnosed with 
leprosy, okay? And that's annual, all right? Why? Because we share with you going back to years. You understand what I'm saying? Now, here is showing you how 3,500 people, you understand what I'm saying, is catching this per year, all right? So now what we do is that zeros is placeholders. Here is pertaining to the principle of of 35 people and we had take the 35 people and from the people we add on a year, all right? Based upon how it says that annually 35,000 um, individuals a year, okay? So instead of a year for a day, it's a people for a day. So therefore now we got 35 people. So this will be 35 years minus the five years to make it 40 for the principles of the children of Israel. So what we do is because that we're sharing with you that Mrs. Ivy, okay, or Mrs. Um, 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 I quit Tidum, you understand what I'm saying, is manifesting principles of Joshua, that she is picking up the principles of five. So therefore, the 35 and her being down here, her manifesting principles of Joshua the Messiah, which is the manifestation of Pentecost, because he was the one who poured out his spirit in the hearts and minds of men, she is picking up that principle of five to give you the totality of the 40. So when it's talking about how 35 cases are being diagnosed a year, that's picking up the principle of 35 years. Her going to the colony in and out and her being that principle of five, you understand what I'm saying? Because she is a manifestation of Yahshua the Messiah, okay? And we're looking at this. Though that Elohim's number is 888, she is manifesting principles of spirit. You understand what I'm saying? Like an unto Yahshua. So therefore, when it's talking about the 3,500 cases, that is picking up, like I said, the principle of 35, picking up 35 years, her picking up the five, that's picking up the 40 years that's manifesting right here within the wilderness when she goes into the camp or like an unto Mary coming up out of her camp and being placed outside the camp for seven days and she's going into the camp. You understand what I'm saying? Into the colony, all right? And she's taking her family. Okay, so that's picking up the principles of how, like I said, she being the five form back here and fulfilling the principles of the 40 years based upon the 40 people. Okay, and it says that according to um, the disease control, that this bacteria disease can be cured if it's treated. But if untreated, it can cause severe damage to hands and feet, even paralysis and blindness, okay? Now, we've seen some of the pictures of, of the hands, okay? It looks like someone had cut their fingers off, okay? Because I don't know what it does is, but it destroys the hands and the feet, you understand what I'm saying, to make them look like nubs, you understand? As well, it says it causes paralysis and allows them to become blind, okay? So those are the things that happen. So when we look at the things that it is talking about, that what it does is that when we come here to the uh, tabernacle of man, and we're looking at the principles of what it does, the things pertaining to what it will deteriorate. It says that the hands and the feet cause paralysis to make one blind, okay? So that would take away these witnesses, okay? And these witnesses right here. So if we were to take away four from the 12, you understand um, that it would only allow uh, eight, a number eight, you understand what I'm saying? Because here is, you know, like I said, to the process of the hand, allow one to be able to come blind. So we see how it will affect the whole entire body. And later on, that it will manifest an individual to die. It says how that initially they were hesitant when she mentioned on going to the E.K. Penny Obom Leprosy Hospital but they all um, eventually all accompanied her at a visit, which changed her life. Like many leprosy hospitals around Nigeria, Ikhine Obon also provides accommodation for patients who can no longer, uh, as patients who can no longer return to their original countries. On owing to stig Matization, even after they are cured from the disease, that is treatable within six to twelve months um, of a course of antibiotics. Okay, so this particular disease can be treated within six to twelve months. All right. Um, and then it says they remain there with their family. Uh, their children attend school also uh, within the premises. Um, it says that Mrs. Um, I called to them, um, the residents and patients, that she understood their plight. She says, I knew what it was to be abandoned and to be stared at, she said. 
So therefore, based upon these particular principles, we see how this particular woman had manifested the same principles or what had manifested with Miriam um, when she had uh, received leprosy. You understand what I'm saying? So we wanted to run these particular ramifications and show you these particular principles on um, how that this was a manifestation of what had happened within the uh, wilderness of Sinai uh, after the children of Israel had came to and filled the divided waters of the Red Sea, okay? So we wanted to show you those particular principles. Now, based upon how long that that took us to be able to run that particular ecology, we was already at 10 o'clock last night. If I had to ran this one, that would have put us like around 11.30. You understand what I'm saying? Would have been very late. We would have been four hours, you understand what I'm saying, with one particular uh, program. And we didn't want to do that with you. So we kind of broke it up, you understand, so that you would be able to enjoy, um, you know, the colleges, um, how they come, and not to be so extensive and so long going based upon us trying to um, attach uh, every principle that is talking about and then still stay within a reasonable uh, time for you to be able to, you know, enjoy the gospel and it, it's not being so, oh, it's too long. It's, oh, it's just too much. You know, we don't want to do it like that. So, you know, we apologize for the lengthy ones, but at the same time, if you're edified and you're eating, hallelujah, all praise be to Yahshua the Messiah. You know, we're not trying to uh, prove no points. You understand what I'm saying? All we're trying to do is follow uh, the perception and direction exam and lead one unto Yahshua, the Messiah. Okay? All right. So that should fulfill our first ecology uh, within Nigeria. Our second ecology brings us um, to Haiti. It says here within Haiti that a fuel tanker blast killed dozens in cap um, Hey, hey, TM. People stand off at the site of the explosion. More than 50 people have been killed after a fuel tanker exploded in northern Haiti. Officials say, reports say that the vehicle was involved in an accident in the city of Cap Haiti. And the victim had been trying to gather leaking fuel when it ignited. Local hospitals have been overwhelmed by those injured in the blast. Prime Minister Ariel Henry said the entire Caribbean nation was grieving after the accident. As he declared three days of mourning, I learned with desolation and emotion the sad news of the explosion that night in Cap. He wrote on Twitter on Tuesday, pictures posted on several social media shows and intense blaze as he, as the scene of the accident in Hayes, second largest city. One witness described the blaze site as hell. Dozens of people were injured in the explosion and local medics say they fear the death toll would rise. We don't have the ability to treat the number of serious drunk people. A nurse in the Justin University Hospital told AFP news agency, I'm afraid we won't be able to save them all. We are overwhelmed. A, lot, a local doctor told uh, Haiti, uh, Lee, New, Nouvelle, Listy, Nouvellis, I'm sorry, Le Nouvellis newspaper. The government has announced that it is deploying field hospitals to the area to help those affected. We need human resources. We also need material resources, namely uh, serums, gauze, and anything that can be used in case of serious burns. Mayor Yevros Paris said, Deputy Mayor Patrick Al Mornor, who visited the site of the blast, told reporters the victims he saw had been so badly burned, they were impossible 
to identify. He added that about 20 houses in the area had also been set on fire by the explosion. The United Nations office in Haiti said it stood ready to help national authorities respond to the tanker explosion. It comes at Haiti is experiencing a severe fuel shortage as powerful gangs have seized control of much of the fuel distribution around the country. Haiti is also in the grip of a major economical and political crisis in the wake of President Jovenel Moy's assassination, assassination earlier this year. So now when we look at this particular ecology, <clears throat> and it's talking about here within Haiti how a fuel tanker blast kills dozens in the capital of Haiti, Haitian. And it says that people uh, stand at the site of the explosion, okay? Now, what happens is that when we come here to the divine vision of being revealed, okay, we had already showed you principles based upon the authentication of the divine vision of revelation of our founder, as well as principles pertaining to the perception and direction of them. Here, what we do is that we share with you principles based upon when we talk about principles of an explosion. Uh, we share with you on many times that what we do is that we have to come here to this particular part of the chart, okay? Based upon when we're showing you principles of 9-11, uh, principles of the children and the needs of the woman, all right? So therefore, what happens is that it brings us right back here to the chart, and we want to show you these particular principles of this explosion that happened over here in Haiti. Now we come right here because we share with you principles of how we have uh, South and we have Sarah here, how we got Hagar and we got Hate here, okay? And so therefore we have Hater and Haiti, and this is where we get Haiti from because we got H-A-T-E, you understand what I'm saying? All right, and, and come all the way down, we got um, Hater there, you understand what I'm saying? We just take the uh, R and then we use uh, Haiti, which H. A uh, T E as the principles of H I A T I. You understand what I'm saying? Because the pronunciation is the same, all right? So, what we want to do is, is come here and show you. Uh, we, we talk about that we have to prove all things hold fast to that which is good, all right? So, this is what we do. We come here and we want to show you the principles of hate, all right? Or hater, all right? Manifesting right here, picking the principles of Hagar, principles of Sarah, picking up both principles of the woman, of what we share with you pertaining to it being a woman of righteousness or a woman of unrighteousness, okay, based upon whatever principles that you're applying, all right? Now, it says that um, that when we come here to the cap of, of Haiti in, you understand what I'm saying, is that we're coming here, okay, because this is one who has hate in, you understand what I'm saying? So it says the capital of Haiti, in, all right? So when we come to Haiti and we come here to this particular individual and we're seeing how we got the seven and three, Manifesting here within his chest cavity, and we got the one pertaining to the mark that Elohim had put upon uh, the man once he had killed his brother. You understand what I'm saying? And we know that his principle pertaining to the spiritual emergent and quickness, that it was the principle or the marking of 666 that was put upon him. He said that anyone seeing me will slay me, and Yahweh Elohim said that anyone who was a slave came, uh, the same um, uh, principle shall be applied for him seven times seven. Okay, so therefore we see these particular principles and manifesting right there. Okay, now it says how that the um, explosion, okay, killed more than 50 people. Okay, after uh, a fuel tanker exploded in northern Haiti, officials say. All right, so therefore when we come here and we look at these particular principles, it says here with this particular explosion how it killed um, 50, more than 50 individuals. You understand what I'm saying? So when we come here and we see how we got capped Haiti, Haiti in, you understand what I'm saying, right here, and we understand how Haiti in, which was a manifestation of Cain killed Abel, all right? This was the principle of the seed of Gaspar, the Messiah, or the seed of Elohim, or the seed of Adam, Adam to manifest all the way down to further manifest principles of Joshua, the Messiah. So therefore, based upon uh, Cain slowing Abel, and Abel was a manifestation of the innocence of Joshua, the Messiah, 
we share with you based upon the principles of how that when I come here to the chart and we come up here, we showed you the principles of Judas and Yahshua are fulfilling the same principles based upon uh, uh, Judas and Yahshua picking up the principles of the end, okay? Based upon how Yahshua Messiah is fulfilling all the principles pertaining to the law of Moses going all the way back here and fulfilling these particular principles of Cain and Abel. So here with the principles of Cain and Abel, we see how Yahshua is fulfilling the principles of Ennis and Abel, and then Cain is picking up the principles of Judah, okay? So what it was within the beginning, with two, we have it within the end by the two brethren, one slew the other brother, and one slew the other brother, okay? So therefore, we see these particular principles manifest right here, all right? So when it's talking about the 50 individuals who have been killed based upon this fuel tank explosion, and it manifests over within northern Haiti, you understand what I'm saying? That allows us to be able to come here based upon the principles of the north, we come here because we understand the principles here within the north, this is the northern Haiti, that here is another hater, or, or Haitian. You understand what I'm saying? Which is the principles of Alpha Draconis, okay, which is picking up the principles of Pharaoh, as well as picking up principles as the Pope of Rome. You understand what I'm saying? And we come here because these are principles over here within the north that's picking up principles of our Stony Heart chart. Okay, our stony heart plate. So when we come over here and we look at these particular principles that this particular explosion that is talking about that happened in the capital Haiti in that this explosion had happened over here pertaining to northern Haiti. Okay. Now when that explosion is happening over here, that's killing these particular 50 individuals that is picking up and destroying this stony heart. Okay, because this is our stony heart plate. You understand what I'm saying? So based upon that this particular explosion. Okay, that we see right here is happening over here, and we drag it all the way over here to where we look at the principles of the stony heart plate, where it's talking about um, you have your anti messiahs, your false prophets, your denominations, your deceivers that are false teachers or infidels, which are skeptics and atheists with false science and their theoretical opinions. And this is that this is showing how, based upon the principles of St. Peter's Vatican and this being the stony heart plate, how it is burning and destroying all of these particular um, things that are the characteristics of this particular stony heart. You understand what I'm saying? Because it's talking about Haiti in. You understand what I mean? So the Haiti in is bringing you these particular principles, okay? Because like, like we shut up and shared with you, I'll just be so excited. I'm trying to slow down, okay? And I'm gonna slow down, all right? And when we came here and showed you principles of cap Haiti in, all right? That when it's talking about how we have the seven and three manifest here within its heart, Okay, because it's principles of how that he has the hate on the inside of him, that this is his heart. Okay, these are the things that's within his chest cavity. So, this is the reason why that we come here when it's talking about that it happened, uh, this blast happened in northern Haiti. All right, we pick up the principles to show you Haiti. Okay, based upon the principles of red, black, and green, pick up the African nation coming over here, showing the same principle here. All right, red, black, and green, green showing you the principles of Haiti. All right, red, black, and green showing you the principles of Haiti hey, hey, in, you understand what I'm saying? Here you see how that this stony heart is right here when you see the plate right here within um, Alpha Draconis, picking up the principles of the stony heart. So he has a heart of stone, all right? So we come over here, we wanna show you this, because when it says how it was an explosion over here, that wanna show you what was being destroyed, all right? So therefore we come here and show you, all right? That here that you see, them standing on based upon the principle where the throne is, that this is like unto what's in his chest cavity. This is this, okay, showing you what's in here, right? How he's the anti Messiah, a false prophet, uh, with denominations, deceivers, false teachers, infidels, skeptics, atheists, with false science and theoretical opinions. That's all in Alfred Drake Holmes. You understand what I'm saying? And all his imps who believe what he believes, all right? So, therefore, when we're looking at this explosion, this is blowing all of this up. This is showing you how that this fire is burning from within. Okay, and this explosion is devouring all this within eternal fire, based upon the eternal lake of fire of how all these particular evil things, these evil principles are being burnt up and consumed. You understand what I'm saying? So this is why we are revealing these particular things. And in like manner, I want to share this while I'm here, okay? This is based upon one of the comments that I have received from Dr. Bruce Cooper, okay? I really appreciate the comments that Dr. Bruce Cooper um, have diligently 
um, sent me based upon the things that he has looked on our particular site and the things that he said that Yahweh Elohim has revealed to him. Now, let me share something with you, okay? Now, I never met this particular gentleman face to face or within the flesh. You understand what I'm saying? Now, the gentleman has shared with me based upon some of the things uh, that he has received based upon our particular lectures, okay? And he has made a declaration of how he said that I can witness the Holy Spirit being in you like it is in me. Now, I can recognize that Dr. Uh, Bruce Cooper has the Holy Spirit and the spirit of Yahweh Elohim dwells within him. You understand what I'm saying? Based upon that some of his previous comments that the man has told me on more than one occasion that hell will be televised through satellites and also manifest on television. Now he told me that he heard this, I believe, I do stand to be corrected, that he said that he had a conversation with um, our uh, former um, vice president and international dean, Dr. Robert Harris, where he said that he had uh, received that particular information from him. You understand what I'm saying? And I do believe that that's what he shared with me on one of his comments. I do stand to be corrected. And if I'm wrong, you understand what I'm saying? I'm not above correction. But be that as it may, you understand what I'm saying? For me to identify um, Dr. Uh, Bruce uh, Cooper from the, um, 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 I believe he said that he was from the Orleans branch um, class, that I know that this man has the Holy Spirit because this gentleman has made a prophecy, okay, about hell manifesting on TV and it being televised. Now, this is my second witness based upon I have an ecology. And here, when it says that um, I'm looking at um, this particular uh, ecology, and it says that um, on the scene, how it says of the place, how one of the witnesses described the blast as a site of hell when they was looking at this particular blaze and how it was burning, okay? Now, when it says that to me, and based upon when this gentleman told me how hell shall be visualized on satellite and on TV, you understand what I'm saying? This gentleman's prophecy has come to pass. Now, when we go to the scriptures, it says that when any man prophesies within the name of Yahweh Elohim, and it come to pass, it says that I, Yahweh, have sent him, and he is a servant of Yahweh Elohim. And it says that if another individual prophesies in my name and the prophecy does not come to pass, then I, Yahweh, did not send him, and he is a false prophet, he is a deceiver, you understand what I'm saying, and then therefore he falls upon the category characteristics of an individual who has a stony heart, you understand what I'm saying, because everything that he's saying there are false signs and they are theoretical theoretical opinions, you understand what I'm saying, and so therefore this is what allows me to be able to see uh, one versus the other. You understand what I'm saying? Pertaining to the principles of righteousness and the principles of unrighteousness. You understand what I'm saying? And so therefore, I say this to anybody that is a person who has um, who has prescribed to our page, you understand what I'm saying? Or happens to go on my page to where they read the comments, you know what I'm saying? Of, of individuals that you can go on my page and see for yourself, you understand what I'm saying, the date and time that um, Dr. Bruce Cooper has sent me, you understand what I'm saying, this prophecy. And now today, I would like to reveal unto the viewers, you understand what I'm saying, how it has come to pass. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm making a declaration of that individual and bear witness to him that that is a recipient of the Holy Spirit. You understand what I'm saying? Because spirit recognize spirit. You understand what I'm saying? And so therefore, based upon what the gentleman has said, he said it on more occasions, how Yahweh Elohim has allowed that to come to pass to where hell, you understand what I'm saying, has been televised on TV, just like the individual prophesies. You understand what I'm saying? And this is what we are supposed to do when Yahweh Elohim gives us a sign. This is how we recognize, you understand what I'm saying, if our brethren is a recipient of the Holy Spirit like you do. You understand what I'm saying? Because he is going to make predictions and prophecies just like you, and they're going to come to pass. You understand what I'm saying? And that's not negating the simple fact of how an individual can be full of the Holy Spirit and make a prediction and it come to pass. Because that's the spirit of Yahweh Elohim manifesting in a man. You understand what I'm saying? And like we say, this is spirit recognizing spirit, okay? Spirit communing with spirit, okay? So one can identify to know 
who one is pertaining to those who are recipients that are within the body of Yahshua the Messiah, okay? Opposed to those who are faking and manifesting as angels of light and manifesting within this particular body of Satan, okay? Or Alfred Draconis, you understand what I'm saying? What you understand the principles of this particular dragon who says that he is a river of his own and all these particular fish who stuck to the scales, which are his imps, are the one fair host who was cast up out of heaven. You understand what I'm saying? That will follow and stick with him and die with him in this particular body until it's demise, okay? So I wanted to make reference unto that and show you here within this particular ecology how it is written. And so therefore, when it says that pertaining to the description of the flies of the site, that one of the witnesses described it as scale, dozens of people were injured, okay? And then as well, it says how that the prime minister, Ariel Henry, okay? Now that's a beautiful thing. Okay, now we understand that the prime minister, all right, uh, that he had just taken over from the other prime minister who was in office at the time that Moise, uh, President Moise, Joel Moise was in office. It says that based upon his cabinet that he chose um, PM Ariel uh, Henry, you understand what I'm saying, as the new prime minister. And so therefore we see how that both of the prime ministers obviously worked out uh, their, their position. And, and now we see how that now um, uh, Prime Minister Ariel Henry is the prime minister of um, Haiti. Now we share with you pertaining to the principles of Ariel, that Ariel is an archangel, okay, pertaining to the angels that are within the kingdom of Yahweh element. All right, and we understand it pertains to the principles of Ariel, that Ariel is a church, it's like how Gabriel and Michael are. You understand what I mean? Now, we share with you principles of how that when they had went into King Solomon's temple and they placed the Ark of the Covenant uh, with up underneath the two bigger cherubims, that one of those bigger cherubims that they placed the Ark of the Covenant with Gabriel and Michael on, he had two bigger ones, okay? And their wings touched, okay? And then you set the Ark of the Covenant right there that um, to my understanding that one of those um, our angels were Ariel, okay? Now, we also share with you pertaining to the principles of our founder, that his name is Dr. Henry Cook McKinley. And so therefore, you know, when we look at um, principles of the prime minister, Ariel Henry, you understand what I'm saying, that we just decipher that, break it up, you know, you know, according to how it's supposed to be broken up, looking at that was an archangel. Um, we have individuals within our school system that say that, um, you know, Dr. Henry Cook McKinley was the the seventh angel, you understand what I'm saying? That's fine as well too, okay? And But we just wanted to kind of pick up these particular principles um, to show you and correlate them to uh, not only our founder, who we understand that was Yahweh Elm, who manifested in the physical body in the year of 1931, uh, when he took over that particular body and manifested with us into the year of 1976, all right? Now, it says here that uh, medics said that they feared the death toll would rise. Uh, says that we don't have the ability to treat the number of the seriously burned, all right? Now, here it says that uh, that Ariel Henry had made a declaration for three days of mourning, okay? So based upon all those who were mourning over within the Caribbean, you understand what I'm saying, based upon this explosion in this particular incident, that he made a declaration for everyone to be able to mourn for three days, all right? Now, when we look at the prophecy pertaining to the principles that happened with the children of Israel, now we understand that right before Moses had went up into Mount Nebo, that, that Yahshua, the son of Nun, Eliezer, and um, Moses had went up into Mount Nebo. And when they went up into Mount Nebo, it says that Yahshua, the son of Nun, came down by himself, and Moses was there, and all the children of Israel had mourned for Moses, okay? Now, we understand that that was the young men of valor that was manifested out here. They cried for Moses for 30 days, okay? And they said it was a totality of 33 days, but the three days they had uh, prepared um, victuals or food so that they can prepare themselves to get ready to go to and through the divided waters of the River Jordan and to prepare themselves over here to go regain their inheritance, okay? So when we look at the principle of the 33 days of mourning, that we take the 30 days, okay, principle, because that's like unto when Yahshua had started his ministry, the total of the 33 days was a totality of year four days, was the age of Yahshua when he had completed his ministry and he was crucified here upon the cross, okay? So therefore we see how the Messiah had fulfilled that 
being 33 years of age, they mourn for Yahshua, just how they mourn for Moses. You understand what I'm saying? So we got those particular principles there. So here within this particular ecology, based upon the 50 people who have lost their lives, but that was in correlation unto uh, the principle to where 50 is a principle of Pentecost that's relating unto the Jews, believers receiving the spirit of Yahshua and Messiah, that he's causing a day of mourning, okay? And so therefore, since Yahshua fulfilled that, that that's like unto Yahshua, uh, pertaining to the principle of 50 and the 50 individuals who have died, okay? And so since they have in three days of mourning, you see how Moses had 33 days of mourning, that that's picking up those particular principles because this is applied to Moses, all right? Um, when we go down and they said that we don't have all of the resources, and it says how that the doctor says, uh, well, the governor first he said that he's deploying a field hospital in the area. Okay, so in essence, that they're going to set up a hospital uh, right where the explosion had happened, so they don't have to go and travel so far. All right. Then, as well, it's saying how that um, that when um, Mayor Patrick Al Monor had visited the site of the blast that he said that he saw victims that was burned so badly that it was impossible to identify them. You understand what I'm saying? Now, you know, for a person or a physical body to be burned that bad, you understand what I'm saying? And we know that the smell flesh, okay, to be consumed does not smell that good, okay? It smells really, really bad to smell remains of a human body being cooked, you understand what I'm saying? are burned that severely, you understand? So what happens is that that comes back and it brings us right back here to the principles of what happened when Yahweh Elohim had put the mark upon Cain. He said that anybody seeing him, you understand what I'm saying, would automatically kill him because of his flesh, you understand what I'm saying, and the mark that Yahweh Elohim had put upon him, okay? So that's likened unto these individuals whose flesh had burned up to where it was not recognizable because after Yahweh Elohim had put that mark upon Cain, his flesh, you understand, him, was not as recognizable as it was to where before that he had done the transgression. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why he said that anybody who looks upon me will want to kill me. So therefore, here it says that when he had looked upon those individuals, he said that it was impossible because it was burned beyond recognition. It was impossible to be able to identify them. So when we come here and we look at these particular principles, when we talk about how we have coats of flesh on, but yet and still that this is a spiritual age and we can't see what spirit is inside of the individual. So therefore, we have to see what this individual's characteristics manifest. You understand? what I'm saying we have a terminology in in our in our classroom that says as soon as you open your mouth that we got you that we know what mystery you are you understand what I'm saying but when we have on this code of flesh that is hard for us to be able to determine what spirit is manifesting within the individual you understand what I'm saying just on a, a natural everyday basis you understand what I'm saying so therefore you have to look for the characteristics of one or the other to understand who you are dealing with you understand what I'm saying uh spiritually and psychologically so all right so here we have uh, the mayor going down here saying that individual was burnt beyond identification and recognition and so therefore like i said it brought us back to the principles because Cain said that anybody who looking upon me will sought to take my life you understand what i'm saying okay because of his appearances you understand what i'm saying and his identification based upon the mark that y'all be eloquent has set upon him and here when we look at this darkness okay all the way around how we see how these individuals are burning within the lake okay here we see how they're being consumed right here within the lake okay uh the lake of fire so therefore, they're going to be burned, you know what I'm saying, beyond recognition to where you won't be able to identify them for the simple fact um, that we're not looking at the physical aspect of the individuals based upon we're looking at the characteristics. So therefore, they will be applied to this particular satanic body, okay? So therefore, they will be within this particular satanic body, which will be burning, you understand what I'm saying, for the realm of eternity, forever and ever, because of the sins that they are manifesting right now upon the face of the world, okay? So this is the reason why that we are deciphering these things and showing you how that there are two mysteries in operation. You understand what I'm saying? That it's hard to be identified with the naked eye. So this is the why we say that there are two mysteries in operation, okay? There's not two sons of Yahweh, okay? A righteous son and an unrighteous son. That's not correct. 
You can't go in the scriptures and nor can you prove that. The only thing that it says is, is how that you have the son of perdition. You understand what I'm saying? Now, if you understand the principles based upon how the division work, that Yahshua the Messiah, which was no more than Yahweh Elohim manifesting within the flesh. Now, this was Yahweh Elohim, the creator manifesting within the flesh. But when he was in the flesh, that he manifested the principles of sonship degree. So therefore, when Satan is manifesting within the physical body, he is manifesting the principles of the son of perdition, okay? Because Yahshua has already identified him as the father of lies, okay? You know what I'm saying? And he was alive from the beginning pertaining to and emerged from the beginning pertaining to the principles that had manifested right here with the principles of pain. And he showed you pertaining to the things that he did when he slew his brother, that how this was a spiritual immersion in wickedness, and therefore the satanic spirit had entered into him, okay? And that became his delight and his pleasure, okay, based upon the things that Yahweh Elohim said. All right, so this is how that we correlate those particular things, all right? Now. It says that he also added that about 20 houses in the area had also been set on fire by the explosion. We share with you pertaining to the principles of 20 that that's going back to the 20th alphabet of the Hebrew alphabet pertaining to the alphabet of Resh, okay? You can pick that up over there, I believe, in the 159th book of Psalms. I'm sorry, the 139th book of Psalms pertaining to the alphabet of Resh. Resh means how... It means destructive, okay, or distress, all right? It says how 20 homes had caught on fire based upon the explosion, okay? And, and also it represents how 20 in Resh in the Hebrew tongue means not pleased because we understand it pertaining to the principles of how King Solomon had gave King Haram uh, 20 cities within the, the uh, land of Galilee, okay? And when so uh, Hiram came to that city that Solomon had gave King of Tyree, King Hiram, he said that he wasn't pleased with them. You understand what I'm saying? He said, brethren, what are these? Okay. So therefore, based upon the number of 20, and when we look within the Hebrew uh, numerical and alphabetical system that is pertaining to principles of not pleased and distressed. And so therefore, there was 20 homes that were destroyed or burnt up based upon the explosion and those individuals had to evacuate. It says that the United Nations office in Haiti have said it stood ready to help national authorities respond to the tank of explosion. It comes at Haiti is, is experiencing a severe fuel shortage and powerful gangs have seized um, control of the distribution um, of fuel, okay? So now it says that these particular gangs have seized control over Haiti's fuel. And then it's saying how that, um, that Haiti is going through fuel shortages, you understand what I'm saying? So based upon this particular fuel shortage, all right, when this particular explosion had happened, it says that the victims were stealing fuel from this particular gas truck because it got into an automobile accident. You understand what I'm saying? So obviously if this particular gas truck had gotten an automobile accident and it's leaking gas and their two vehicles came together and crashed, we got a lot of, um, um, igniting coming from up under the hood, we already know that it's going to pretty much explode. You know what I'm saying? It's only going to be a matter of time. So therefore, we see how it worked and those individuals who were stealing or taking wind or something at a particular time was burnt and consumed because they were trying to loop gasoline from this particular truck. You understand what I'm saying? And it exploded and killed a lot of individuals. And now it's talking about how the gangs over here in Haiti have seized control of the distribution of fuel, okay? And that the uh, county of Haiti is also um, in the grip of a major economic and political crisis in the wake of their president, okay, being assassinated early this year. And them experiencing as well another earthquake, which was a very big earthquake that killed a lot of individuals over there. And we share with you based upon the principles of Haiti and the things that go over there in Haiti, how that is the blue capital. And we understand pertaining to that, that any religion that goes against the true worship of God with Elohim, how that, how Yahweh Elohim said that he is a jealous hell and he is against that. Now, based upon how he destroyed all the deities down here within the land of Egypt, now spiritual Egypt is worldwide. And Yahweh Elohim has opened up his seven vows, okay, of vengeance and wrath upon the whole entire world who have lived deliciously and lavishly with the whorlet. You 
you understand what I'm saying? That is speaking of over there that John wrote over there in the book of Revelation. So therefore, Yahweh Elohim is taking flame and vengeance on those who know not Yahweh. And so since all the kingdoms of the earth, it says all, it has not discredited any. You understand what I'm saying? So therefore, just like how it says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of Yahweh Elohim is saying how all of the kingdoms have committed fornication with that particular court, if you understand what I'm saying, that done things damnable, okay, for them to be uh, within a position that they're in. And so therefore, based upon we see all these particular plagues that are transpiring throughout the whole entire world, you know, we can start off with COVID. Then we see how we got storms, tornadoes, and all the things uh, within the characteristics that is talking about over there in Matthew, the 24th chapter. So what I would advise you to do is go over there and read the Matthew, the 24th chapter and see about the things pertaining to rumors of wars, plagues and diseases and things of that particular nature, just like how we read uh, tonight, that if you go back based upon the individuals who was getting the quail, you understand what I'm saying? When Yahweh Elohim had allowed quail to blow from the sea, you understand what I'm saying, over here for the children of Israel to eat, how that once they, when they had the, the chewing the meat within their teeth, how they, excuse my language, they pissed Yahweh Elohim off and he plagued the people. You understand what I'm saying? And start killing them off there. So since the people pissed Yahweh off now, you understand what I'm saying? What you think he's doing now? He's plaguing the people. He got plagues manifesting upon the whole entire earth. He is wiping out everything. You understand what I'm saying? That is just... He's destroying everything, and he's showing that it's his power, because now you're looking at things pertaining to what they call as phenomenons, okay, world phenomenons. You got typhoons, you got flash floods, you got uh, everything pertaining to the days of creation, of how the creation came in, that you got remanifesting upon the face of the world. You got volcanoes erupting, you got forest fires, you got floods. You understand what I'm saying? And then let me share this with you, too, that it's happening whenever it wants to. It doesn't make a difference if it's summer. It doesn't make a difference if it's spring. It doesn't make a difference what season that it is, that all of these things are happening year around. It's like how we share with you based upon the ecology when that particular tornado had came through. We said that the tornado season usually happened in spring or summer. But for it to happen within the winter time, that's historical and phenomenal, okay? But that's taking you all the way back to Yahshua the Messiah because these are the things that consist that happen within the fourth day of creation, okay? When we're looking at things pertaining to seasonal type of things, okay? And things that's happening within the winds. We share with you how Yahshua the Messiah told the four angels to hold back the four winds so that it would not destroy or hurt the earth. You understand what I'm saying? Until an appointed time. And so now we're seeing how Yahweh Elohim has given the four angels permission to let the winds go to do what? To destroy the Earth. You understand what I'm saying? And how everything is being led back to him. You understand what I'm saying? And all the principles are being led back to him, showing you how that it was him, the son of man, who was known as Joshua the Messiah, who came in and fulfilled the characteristics of a lamb, who came in and fulfilled the characteristics of a lion, who came in, you understand what I'm saying, who fulfilled the characteristics of a ram, who came in and fulfilled the principles and the characteristics of not only the animal kingdom, the man kingdom, and things of that particular nature, okay, and showed you how that he had manifested principles as the S S U N, as the things that had manifested within the elements, and then manifested himself as principles of a tree, or the first fruits of those who resurrected. You understand what I'm saying? To show you how he came in to fulfill the whole entire creation based upon how he said that I, Yahshua the Messiah, or I, Yahweh Elohim, shall what? Do all of my pleasures. And so therefore, by all the things that he has fulfilled, based upon the principles that I've showed you, that he fulfilled principles within the vegetation kingdom, within the astronomical kingdom, within the animal kingdom, and then within the kingdom of man, okay, to show you how that this was the creator and how he fulfilled the totality of everything within his creation. You understand what I'm saying? So these are the things that we wanted to share with you to keep you up to date on the things that are transpiring and what's going on and tell you why they are going on instead of keeping you guessing. You understand what I'm saying? And run around sometimes like that I don't know what's going on or I don't know what the creator is doing. For you to sit up and say that, that you're foolish. You understand what I'm saying? And you're not following the truth, the way, and the light are doing the things which I found her told us to be able to do, to look towards the Middle East so that we will not be ignorant or in the dark pertaining to the things of what our creator is doing. Okay? All right. So now here, we come to our third ecology. Our third ecology brings us to Indonesia. 
it says in Indonesia that a 7.4 earthquake magnitude shakes south Sula Wesa off the coast of eastern Indonesia. A 7.4 magnitude struck off the coast of the Indonesia south Sulawesi province, prompting people to evacuate homes and buildings. The earthquake happened around 10.30 local time, which is 3.30 GMT time on Tuesday in the Flores Sea. It affected the east of Nusa, 10 Gora region. Officials said no injuries or major damages have been reported yet, but locals said they felt large tremors. Tsunami warnings for the area were lifted later on Tuesday. Videos, social media show people in the city of Makassar running down the corridor of a hospital in the district of Ben Tag. Wait, Ben. Ben T. Ben T as a man's voice in the background is heard shouting an earthquake in the hospital. There are also reports that a hotel was evacuated. Photos carried by a local media um, um, showed some houses that had been partially destroyed as a result of the quake in Luke Ron Tuka a city in the East Nusa, Tenjeraria region. Residents were said to have been in panic. Everyone was shocked. They were running from their homes. Some were ready to run to the hills. Mr. Uh, Tagdar, a resident told the BBC Indonesian News. However, he added that most of the people had now returned to their normal activities, adding there was no sign of a tsunami. The quake comes just 10 days after a major Mount um, Samura volcano erupted on the island of Java, which killed at least 46 people. Earthquakes are common in Indonesia, as the Arch uh, del Lago lies on the um, ring of fire a curve of volcanoes and vault lines in the Pacific Ocean. So here, when we look at this particular ecology um, that had manifested within uh, Indonesia, and we talk about the principles of an earthquake, okay? And therefore, just like we have shared with you based upon the principles of uh, typhoons, cyclones, and things of that particular nature, that when we come here, that when we come here to the divine vision of revelation of our founder, Okay, that firstly and foremost, that if you understand the things that happened with Joshua Messiah when he was going through his death, burial, and resurrection, all right? Now, we ain't, now we know that there was a big earthquake that happened when Uriza the king was king of Israel, okay? There was a big earthquake that had manifested back in those days, and that's when the children of Israel were within servitude amongst the, uh, the Gentile nation. But here we understand that when Joshua gave up the ghost, that there was a big earthquake that had manifested right here, okay? So we understand that pertaining to the time of his death, there was an earthquake. And then we understand that when he resurrected, okay, which was um, three days later, that it was a great earthquake, okay, based upon when the angel had rolled back the stone, okay, his tomb, and he resurrected from the grave, that there was a big earthquake. So therefore, we have an earthquake manifesting twice within three days. You understand what I'm saying? Here, one when his death, and then another one when he resurrected to fulfill the principle of the 23 hundred principle of his resurrection okay so now when we come here and we look at the principles based upon what happened in um indonesia all right that when we look at the principle of seven that it brings us here to the sabbath okay because that's a day of rest all right and then we understand that yaku was in 
uh, he, he was buried, okay, pertaining to him being in Joseph's new tomb all that particular Saturday, which is like unto the principle of seven and the Sabbath. Then we come here to the principle of the fourth day of creation because we understand that when the sun was placed within the sky, because we understand it, it was a 7.4. As well, when we look at the principles of the fourth principle or the fourth millennium or the fourth dispensation, that the opening of the fourth millennium was when Moses had brought the children of Israel up out of the land of Egypt. Okay, and that was the, the beginning of the fourth millennium or the beginning of the fourth dispensation. And Yahshua going through his death, burial, and resurrection. You understand what I'm saying? It's the end of the fourth dispensation. So when we look at the principles of <clears throat> a 7.4, it is picking up the totality to bring to it in the principles of the law, okay? Because we understand that all that fourth dispensation, the gospel fulfilled it and brought it to an end with imperfection. So we're looking at the principles of the 7.4. All right, and all of that's leading us to the principles of Yahshua the Messiah. So when we come here to uh, the vision that's being revealed, we show you the same entire principles, okay, when we come here, all right, to show you how all of them are one and the same. Here, when we come here, we pick up the principles of the fourth day of creation, uh, right here, you understand what I'm saying? And this is the principles of the, of the sun rising in the east and setting within the west. Here, when we look at how the sun rises, you understand what I'm saying? Here, we pick up the principle of, of here of this being seven years after Pentecost, okay? Based upon what we understand it after, seven years after Pentecost was when Peter went on to the Gentile nation and preached to Cornelius and the Gentile nation, okay, have received the Holy Spirit in AD 40, okay? And so therefore that's picking up the principles of a seven and four because seven years after Pentecost, uh, in AD 40 that he went into the Gentile nation and they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. When we come here, picking up the principles of the fourth day of creation, we share with you how Yahshua, which is the S-O-N, is, is correlated to the S-U-N and the S-O-N and the, the S-O-N and the S-U-N is one and the same, all right? So therefore, that's picking up the principles of the fourth day of creation. And then therefore, based upon that, he is a manifestation of the tabernacle pattern that was resurrected out here within the land of, of uh, uh, in the wilderness of Sinai, okay? And what we do is, is to pick up that particular uh, principle is that when we come here to the mountain of transfiguration, that we understand that Peter said that when they overheard the conversation, he said, let us make the three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, because the conversation had to be about a tabernacle pattern, because that was a conversation here of when Yahweh Elohim had given Moses the specifications to make this particular tabernacle pattern here in the wilderness of Sinai to place the Ten Commandment law here within the Ark of the Covenant, okay? Which in this, within this three point, this three compartment configuration tabernacle, okay? Seven steps and nine furnishings, okay? So therefore, we see how Yahshua was this particular pattern, all right? So this is how we understand to see the principles of the seven and four. So when it's talking about a 7.4 earthquake, that allows us to be able to come here to the principles of the new earth state, to where we're looking at the principles of the new earth state manifested here with the principles of the seven years after Pentecost and then pertaining to um, Yahshua being uh, the principle of the four coming in in the fourth dispensation, you understand what I'm saying? And as well as picking up the principles of an AD 40, how the seven years from Pentecost, which happened in AD 33, seven years made this AD 40. So this is picking up the same principles of 7.4, okay, was when the Gentiles received Pentecost, all right? And then when we're showing you how that gospel will be in the fourth day of creation and then manifesting the perfection of the tabernacle pattern, you understand what I'm saying based upon the principles of what we showed you on the uh, the um, mountain of transfiguration that we can see how that this is talking about him. Now it says here that um, that this happened on the south of uh, Salu Waisi uh, coast, okay? And so therefore it says that this happened in South South Sulawesi, okay, off the coast in the eastern Indonesia. All right. So it says that it happened here pertaining to the south and in the eastern um, of Indonesia. So when we come here to the south, when we look at the principles that here we come here and we see the principles of the moon because it's pertaining to the principles of 
the law. We understand that when Yahshua went through his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, and outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that when it's picking up the principles of the east that pertain to the sunrise, that is fulfilling the principles of the law. So this is how that we're looking at the principles of the east and the south being joined together because it's showing you how the sun, which is Yahshua's south, fulfills the principles of the law. Okay, that manifests the principles of the principles of south. Okay, and the location of where the moon is. All right. And so when we come and we see how that the earthquake happened at 1030 local time, but we understand that it was 330 GMT time, that when we look at the principles of 330, that we take off the, the zero from the 330 and allow the principles to be 33, okay? And that was the time in the age of Yahshua Messiah when he went through his death, his burial, his resurrection, and his ascension, and the outpouring of his Holy Spirit. So that's showing you how based upon it being GM, GMT time, that is picking up the principles of 33, which likened them to Yahshua Messiah, so we understand and know who it is talking about because we told you that anytime that there's an earthquake that we have to come back unto Yahshua because he is the interior creation. You understand what I'm saying? And so therefore, since he is the interior part of this creation, that everything that goes on inside of the earth, when we go inside the earth, when we see how we have the inner organic altar, we have the magma chambers of the volcanoes manifesting within the core of the earth that we have to come to Yahshua Messiah because he is the one who who rolled the waters back, who penetrated the earth, allowed the vegetation to appear, and then had put the sun, moon, and stars within the sky, and then created the ontological and the biological kings, you understand, and on the sixth day of creation, created the man and the beast of the field. So therefore, all these particular principles, based upon how he is manifesting the interior creation, he is the one who's animated the whole entire creation. So therefore, that's how that we see these things and understand these particular principles. And that's why we come here and we see here how he is the spirit of animation, animating everything within the whole entire creation. And that's how that we come here on the, the, the vision of revelation of our founder. And when we look at these particular principles, this is why we come here. And to prove that, that's the explanation of when we come here and we see how all the veils are yellow here. And you need to come read what's on the veils because here it is showing you how that this is the division between animate and inanimate, division between um, uh, body and soul, and a division between the sexes. You understand what I'm saying? So therefore it is showing you the division between animate and inanimate, body and soul, and the division of the sexes. You understand what I'm saying? To show how Yahweh Elohim is the animal animator of it all okay and showing you the principles of how he is the interior part of the creation allowing all these things to manifest even the earthquakes because it is talking about him then it goes on to say that <coughs> <coughs> that you heard an individual in the city in the background shouting it's an earthquake in the hospital now we share with you pertaining to the principles of shouting, okay? And I think that this is beautiful because what it's doing is that it's giving us another witness pertaining to when we share with you the principles of this tree of knowledge of good and of evil, and how also when we come up here, how it's manifesting the spiritual walls of Jericho or the veil of blindness and death, okay? Pertaining to this tree. So when we come back up here and we see how this tree of knowledge and evil was resurrected up here, Okay, before it was cut away or fell down, principled as the uh, walls of Jericho. Now we understand that when the children of Israel, when we see them manifest themselves right here going in the sun, and then over here you see them coming out of the sun. This is like them going in a circle around. You understand what I'm saying? The top part of this particular tree. So, therefore, if the tree of knowledge of good of evil was resurrected here, and we see how that they are coming around this particular tree and they did it seven times, okay, we got the principle of seven, all right? Because it's a 7.4 that they did this, you understand what I'm saying? They walked around for seven days, all right? And then what they did was they shouted Yahweh's name and then this particular tree had failed, okay? So here we have an individual that's coming down the, the corridor of a hospital. He's yelling, earthquake, earthquake, you understand what I'm saying? And the whole place is shaking. You understand what I'm saying? Like it's getting ready to fall down. And we understand that when we look at these particular principles here based upon this tree falling down, that is principles of an earthquake, that based upon this tree that's falling down, which is likened unto the spiritual walls of Jericho or the veil of blindness, or the veil of death, okay, that is being fallen down and being eradicated because it is showing you like what we said pertaining to my 10th aim and objective is providing you, okay, 
the destruction of Satan and his demons and his kingdom. You understand what I'm saying? And so this is what we are showing you, how his particular kingdom is being destroyed, how it's showing, continually showing you principles of it being collapsed or it falling. Now we share with you prior to that how when we see the attack of this bastard of how he tried to attack the body of Yahshua Messiah. So now, like I said, don't worry about nothing because you're getting ready to see my master hit back, tit for tat. That was my prayer. So therefore, you see these things being able to recome about or recapitulate themselves based upon what I prayed. And now you're seeing how, <clears throat> when I told you how, when we ran that principle of the earthquake, um, and I can't remember the principles, but how I said how within that particular earthquake of where it hit, how he was going to have some more games to sit up and play, you understand what I'm saying? And he did. I said, but don't worry about nothing, because that was the time that two earthquakes had manifest twice within the day. And one picked up principles of the Holy Spirit or the righteous mystery, and one picked up principles of the negative mystery. You understand what I'm saying? You go back within the lectures and see what I'm talking about and just how how he had hit the body of Yahshua the Messiah, now the Messiah is hitting back at him. You understand what I'm saying? And showing into the minds, you see what I'm saying, of his particular kingdom, okay, of how it is fallen, okay, started in the fritter, and Yahweh Elm is showing you these principles of how they're recapitulating, showing you how this particular kingdom have failed with these particular principles of when we're showing you how these walls of Jericho fail. Because these particular walls of Jericho are manifested principles showing you how individuals are blind and got bails up and they are falling away they're falling down people are no longer being blind or ignorant to the things that are manifesting and what people are doing is rising up and choosing the side you understand what i'm saying and sticking with that because the end is close okay and what john said on the on the principle of patmos that he who is righteous let him be righteous still he who is evil let him be evil still so therefore these particular principles, okay, based upon the characteristics of these two particular mysteries are going to manifest because he brought us right back here to show you the principles of what's manifesting within the stony heart and in the heart of Yahshua the Messiah, okay? We just showed you the two differences, all right? So therefore, when we look at that, it gave us an explanation. It told you how that this particular earthquake, which is a 7.4, happened exactly just 10 days after the volcano had happened over there within Mount uh, Semeru, okay? And so therefore we came here to show you the particular volcano in Mount uh, Semeru that happened. When we came here showing how it was a spiritual mountain and how this particular volcano erupted. And now exactly 10 days later, okay, within Indonesia, how that we have this particular earthquake, okay, manifesting over here, you know what I'm saying, at the same time. So based upon the principles of the death, the burial, okay, and resurrection of Yahshua Messiah and his ascension, you understand what I'm saying, how we got this big earthquake, and this principle after this volcano had er 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 uh, erupted over here in Mount Saruru, picking up the principles of the fourth day of creation. So here, picking up the principles of the fourth day of creation based upon the eruption of a volcano, and here, based upon the principles of the fourth day of creation, picking up uh, the earthquake of the resurrection of Yahshua Messiah, you see who it is talking about. It is talking about the inner the interior minister, <laughs> the interior creation, you understand what I'm saying, and how, how based upon the principles of our perception, okay, that our perception is taking us to the Messiah. This is our direction. So therefore, our perception and our direction is leading us into the Messiah. Okay, why? Because in our num numerical system is picking up the principles of four, which is talking about him because he is the door pertaining to the principles of this tabernacle pattern. Okay, all things is leading back to him to give you a repetitive explanation of how we are in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah. Okay, all right. So now based upon that, um, it says how all these particular things are happening because they are all on the Arch del, del Lugo, okay? Lies on the ring of fire, okay? And curves of of volcanoes and vault lines in the Pacific Ocean, okay? So therefore, when we talk about the principles of the ring of fire, you understand what I'm saying? Picking up the principles of Indonesia, what it does is it brings us right back here, okay? And show you these particular principles here when it led us all the way back, okay? Based upon what had happened, when we share with you the principles of the ring of fire, which is right here, you understand what I'm saying? To where we showed you the blood moon reflect, you understand what I'm saying? 
and the blood moon reflection is picking up the ring of fire, okay? And that eclipse that happened right here, that happened on the uh, 26th of May. You understand what I'm saying? Because that was a great and terrible day of Yahweh Elohim, all right? So therefore, when it's talking about those things pertaining to the ring of fire, it always brings us back to the great and terrible day of Yahweh Elohim and all these particular principles that had happened, okay? Right here, these great events, you understand what I'm saying? And when we had had this particular blood moon there, you understand what I'm saying? That is going back and it's picking up the death and demise. You understand what I'm saying? Of Alpha Draconis within our day and time. You understand what I'm saying? They had manifested, you know what I'm saying, amongst us, okay? Within our day and time pertaining to the principles of the satanic spirit manifesting within a physical body, okay? So therefore, we come here and we got the proof right here because it takes us all the way back to the divine uh, rebuttal that our founder wrote over there in volume four okay, of our textbook. You understand what I'm saying? So it's going all the way back there and it's showing you the demise. You understand what I'm saying? How Yahweh Elohim have taken out his enemy, which is Satan. Satan is Yahweh Elohim's enemy. You understand? So we must understand that, all right? So that's why we look at all these particular principles and we share, share with you these particular things so that you can be able to understand them and we run them all the way back from beginning to end. All right, so therefore that should sum up those particular principles within our third ecology. And so now we move to our fourth and final ecology, which takes us to uh, New Zealand. It says here in New Zealand that Southern right whales tracking unexpected Southern Ocean migration. New Zealand's southern right whales were almost hunted to extinction a century ago. Their recovery now depends on health of the ocean. But where exactly do they feed? The answer have surprised scientists and provides hope for the species and, and climate change. In New Zealand's southern right whales are hunted to nearly extinction, extinction. And since that time, the population has slowly recovered. Dr. Emma Carroll, the head scientist on a research project called the Tohora no Atoria, which is a moria phase, that means Southern right whales of New Zealand. We estimate there were around 2000 whales in 2009. However, nobody really going back to look at them over the last decade. And so far this year, we have conducted surveys at their main wintering ground down on the Auckland Island which is almost 450 um, kilometers south of the main island of New Zealand. Permission is needed to visit the area. And the weather is harsh. And this team have been tracking where the whales feed and whether climate changes is affecting their behavior. So what we did is use satellite tags to track their migration out of the Oakland wintering ground and followed them around the Southern Ocean. The tags enable continuous tracking for about six months. The whales are still transmitting. We're still collecting a lot of data. data. But already what we found has been quite surprising that Southern right whales from New Zealand would travel north and east of New Zealand during those spring and summer months. So here, when we look at this particular ecology and it's talking about how they have tracked um, these, these Southern right whales was unexpected within the Southern ocean migration, how that it says that most of these particular whales were hunted pretty much to an extinction a hundred years ago. Now, when we look at the principle of what it's talking about, of how these particular whales were hunted, and they came to extinction nearly 100 years ago, that that's picking up the principles of how Father Abraham, that he had Isaac at this particular time, which was principled as the Holy Spirit. 
when we come here to the divine vision and revelation, what we do is that when we're just talking about principles of wells, okay, and we come here to show you principles uh, that uh, was being revealed um, based upon the ontological and biological kings. And when we come here to the divine vision and revelation of our founder, that we come here and we show you principles of what you see when we come here to the fifth day, all right? And what you see based upon when we talk about the principles of the ontological and biological kings, what you have there, you have a well, okay? Manifesting itself right there, all right? And so therefore, like I said, when you come here to see the division between inanimate and animate, how all of the creatures that were within the waters, and we got the birds and the fish that were created from the water, okay, that they wasn't animate until the spirit of animation got in them and moved them. Okay, so therefore we're looking at how the principle of this southern whale, right whale of New Zealand, you understand what I'm saying, is um, we're looking at its particular uh, migration, okay, of how that they have recovered based upon how they was nearly hunted to extinction, okay? So now when we look at that, all right, we come here to the Bible and the Revelation, we see the principles, okay? of the whales, okay, um, and at the principles of the mammals. We come here, to the divine vision being revealed, come here, we see the principles of the whale. Manifest right here, okay, because it's going back to the principles of the new earth state and also picking up principles of Joshua the Messiah. And then we come here, show you principles of the whale here. here and when we came here to show you this particular principle here of the particular of uh, wells that we have a constellation that we understand as my residence you understand what i mean and therefore we uh, have the principles pertaining to jonah and the lobster man and the things that happened with that particular ecology that we happen that we have up here that happened uh 6 16 21 okay pertaining to when we was going over uh, the days within the lunar calendar. We're still going over the days within the lunar calendar. We are on the, uh, the um, where we are now, we are still within the uh, month of bull, if I'm not mistaken. And we should know we are in uh, Chislu. That's where we are now, okay? Because yes, we have to be um, over there right about now. And, and when we were following the days uh, within the year, we're still within that first year based upon that year when Yahweh Elohim had told the children of Israel that this shall be the first day of the month, the first year unto you and all these particular things, okay? So we got all these things manifested, okay? So we wanted to show you based upon how it is showing you how these particular wells um, have come back uh, based upon they were almost extinct and now that we see and how that they are recovering, we have uh, scientists pertaining to, they have tagged them with satellites, okay? Here on the vision and revelation that's being revealed, we got principles that talk about satellites over here, all right? On this side of the chart right here, when we talk about these particular principles here, all right? Because we got satellites over here, and now we got how these particular satellites are tagging these particular whales to see their particular migration of where they're going and how they are feeding, all right? And in essence, that when we looked at the migration of these particular whales, and we look at the uh, trek that um, Saul had taken uh, the four times, you understand what I'm saying, within his lifetime, before he had went over here and he had remained and died over here within the land of Rome because he had appealed unto Caesar. And we're looking at his trek from Jerusalem all the way down uh, throughout the Mediterranean Sea, all throughout, okay? So when we was looking at how uh, they were within the, uh, where these whales were, okay, over here in New Zealand, all right? Um, that it says that um, but they were in the uh, Southern Ocean migration, okay? Over here in New Zealand, and we see how that, uh, based upon their tags, that we were seeing how that they were going about eating up off of the coast. You understand what I'm saying? Over there within the southern part of the particular ocean. And their particular migration was similar unto the, the four trips or the four different uh, migrations or travels of Saul when he had went, you understand what I'm saying, on his four trips 
over the Mediterranean Sea. You understand what I'm saying? So based upon his direction, the way he went and where he went when he was traveling, going throughout all these particular countries, you understand what I'm saying, was the same principles of this particular whales uh, when, uh, when they were feeding, you understand what I'm saying, and their migration based upon them going to their wintering grounds. You understand what I'm saying, and them being able to breed. Okay, so we were looking at those particular principles as well, all right? And so we find it very, very fascinating. And then it says how that, um, that uh, the population has slowly recovered. It says how that we estimate that there are around 2,000 whales, okay? And, and they said it was around 2,000 of them in 2009. It says, however, nobody really has gone back to look at them over the last decade. So this year we have conducted a survey, all right? And it's talking about how that um, their wintering ground in the um, Oakland Islands, which is about 450 uh, kilometers south of the main island of New Zealand, all right? So now when we look at how it says how that their wintering grounds is down in the Oakland um, Island, that it says Auckland, okay? Which is A-C-K-L-A-N-D, and therefore it's pronounced like Oakland. You understand what I'm saying? Now, Oakland is not an island, but Oakland is in Northern California. Based upon it says it is 450 kilometer, kilometers south of the main island in New Zealand, all right? Now, when we look at the principles of south, okay? Now, we understand how our founder went to Southern California and preached for 45 years and opened up the school in 1958. Okay, now we look at these particular things and here it says that it was 450 uh, kilometers. Now we take off those, those placeholders, which is zero. You understand what I'm saying? And pick up the principles of the 45 years, okay? And how that it says that it was south of Oakland. You understand what I'm saying? Oakland is in Northern California, okay? So therefore we look at these particular principles here. So therefore, if this is Auckland and we got um, John on the Isola of Patmos, and it's talking about the Auckland Islands, you understand what I'm saying? And so therefore, Auckland or Oakland is within the north, okay? And it's, and it's talking about how that um, the particular wells was 450 uh, kil uh, kilometers, you understand what I'm saying, south of New Zealand, you understand what I'm saying? That we can look at these particular principles, okay? How that pertains to the principles of Oakland, you understand what I'm saying? That is picking up the principles of us being up north, okay? Or I put it on myself, or me being up north, and based upon the, the founder said, before he had took off the bell of the flesh that I will surely visit Oakland. You understand what I'm saying? And so therefore, since then, that, you know, we have had members within the school say that they have seen um, personifications or things to remind them of the founder that had manifest down here within the Oakland branch. You understand what I'm saying? As well as uh, um, we understand how Dr. Josephine Bailey Gross uh, and Dr. Bill Gross was sent to Oakland, California directly from the founder, okay, as a witness to be able to see when the founder made that particular predicament saying that I would surely visit Oakland, he was talking about his spirit. He was talking about the Holy Spirit. You understand what I'm saying? And so therefore, based upon um, Dr. Bill Gross and Dr. Josephine Bailey Gross, okay, they stayed, you understand what I'm saying, in Oakland to witness to the fact of the things that our founder said, Josephine Bailey Gross stayed into the end, seeing these particular things because she was able to see this come in. She heard it, she seen it, she helped write the book, and as soon as she finished it, she left and said that pertaining to the words of our founder of how his spirit was surely visit Oakland was fulfilled, and now I can go. Those were her last words. You understand what I'm saying? She fulfilled what she was supposed to fulfill based upon what Yahweh Elohim gave her to fulfill. And therefore, we look at these particular principles and we see how they re-manifest within these particular ecologies. You understand what I'm saying? I'm never trying to make none of these ecologies about myself. All I'm doing is, is bearing witness into the spirit that was within our founder. That's the spirit that's within me and anybody else, okay, who witnessed into the fact of the things which Yahweh Elohim have said. Now we read to you, okay, within our scripture reading, that if there be a prophet among you, it says that I, Yahweh, okay, will make myself known unto him, 
in a vision and speak unto him in a dream. As well, we showed you pertaining to the principles of how that when a man of Yahweh ever speak, that that prophecy will come to pass. You understand what I'm saying? And that if he be not a man of Yahweh, that he shall speak and he shall prophesy, and that prophecy will not come to pass to prove how that he is a false prophet, okay? You understand what I'm saying? Of the creator, all right? So therefore, when we look, it says that the wells were still tra transmitting it says, and we are still collecting a lot of data. What we have found was that quite um, surprising is that the southern and right whales in New Zealand would travel from north and east of New Zealand during those spring and summer months. So now it says how they would travel from the north to the east. Okay, and it's talking about in between the months of spring and summer, which allows us to be able to come here because here on the fourth day of creation, it is showing you principles of division of spring and winter, all right? And based upon the fourth day of creation, that when we come here, and even when we come to the divine vision and revelation of our founder, how we got summer, uh, we got spring, winter, and we got fall, okay? We got all the seasons manifesting right here. So therefore, when we come here to the fourth day of creation, we got summer, we got spring, we got winter, we got fall, Okay, and we got all these things here within the four of their creation, and it says from the north to the east that this was the route that they came. And so, therefore, when we look at the principles of northeast, and it's bringing us right back here, that is showing you how the principles of how the sun is rising from the east sets within the west, but it's giving you principles of northeast, okay? Because we understand that based upon the south of where our school had established itself when the founder had came down to California and established it there, okay, that this was 450 kilometers, you understand what I'm saying, from the north, okay? So now we see how these particular principles to see how based upon the north, how the sun has rise within the north, based upon what our founder has said within the south, would happen when his spirit from the south would come over here to the north and how it would allow the sun to be able to rise within the east because the scripture says how he will send a ravenous bird from the north to be able to rise within the east. You understand what I'm saying? To profound his particular gospel and his particular doctrine. All right, so those are the things that's within the scriptures, okay? You got anything that's better, that's fitting the scriptures a little bit more better, that's fitting the threefold intangible tabernacle pattern, fitting the principles of blood, water, spirit, 40, death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. You understand what I'm saying? Please share them with me. I'm open. I love to learn. And basically, if you're using the Bible, the scriptures, the vision, the revelation, and all the principles and the things that our founder has taught based upon the time that he was with us for those um, 45 years that he had preached, you understand what I'm saying, the gospel of gospel the Messiah, and the things that we have learned from him, I'm telling you, it's like this, I'm approachable, I'm teachable, you understand what I'm saying, and I'm a forever student, okay, but make it make sense, okay, go by the things that he has taught us, okay, go by his his lectures, um, our school materials, our books, okay? The tabernacle pattern and the scriptures. You understand what I'm saying? Don't give me your private interpretation of what you think that these scriptures mean. Don't go in there and get one scripture. You understand what I'm saying? And use one scripture and talk about it for one or two hours like they do out there within the church war. You understand what I'm saying? You better give me witnesses to the law and to the testimony and then use the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. You understand what I'm saying? And show me what this thing is talking about, okay? When we're talking about the gospel of the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, and we're talking about this gospel, okay? That was preached to us by our founder, Dr. Henry Cusper Kimmel. So with those particular things, those sum up our particular ecology that we have for this evening's class. And what we will do is that we will see you uh, soon, okay, before the remainder of this particular week um, adjourns, okay? But what we wanted to do was we'll share with you these particular principles, uh, what we have with these particular ecologies based upon the divine vision and revelation that was given to us by our founder and the divine vision and revelation that was revealed to me in the year of 2002 and in the year of 2010. And we just wanted to share with you these particular principles. We hope that it satisfied your spiritual appetite um, and that it allowed you to learn and see something pertaining to the purpose of God or Yahweh or Elohim as he really is and actually exists. So at this particular time, we'll be going to Ephesians, the third chapter, picking up the 20th and 21st verse. 
are the last two verses in the third chapter of Ephesians, and it reads as follows. Now to him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the powers that work in us. Unto him be glory in the assembly of the Messiah, Yahshua, throughout all generations and all ages. Let us all say hallelujah. Thank you for your time. Come back and join us again at this particular time. Let us go hence and shalom.